All right, now it's time to get into Thursday Night SmackDown on UPN, October 28th, 1999. And there was a lot going on in the wrestling world. WCW is still alive. ECW is still alive. Everything is still uh, normal in the year of 1999. But uh, there is still, of course, controversy as usual. Uh, as we look at the Observer from October 25th, 1999. In ECW news, this is... I have never heard this before. I didn't know this was even a possibility or even something that was talked about. Somebody uh, was paid their rate for the night. <laughs> no, no, no. That's no, no, that 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 crazy. That's that crazy. Okay, my bad. <laughs> Uh, just in case anyone thought Jim Helwig may not have totally lost his mind, who is the ultimate warrior, of course, he responded to Paul Heyman's suggestion from months ago that he'd be interested in using the ultimate warrior uh, if Helwig agreed to job to Taz. Uh, Helwig said he didn't have problems <laughs> doing a job, but if Heyman wanted to devalue an already established marketing persona... The only way he would do it is if he did it as a shoot match, and if he was still standing after 30 seconds, he'd get total control of the company. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> what? So there's a timeline where the Ultimate Warrior and Taz had a shoot fight in ECW, and Ultimate Warrior knocks out Taz in 30 seconds and then owns ECW. <laughs> no, I'd like to think he got the Kataz and man passed out right away. <laughs> and he lost. Wow, what in the world? I I have yeah that's I I, I wish Heyman would have uh, humored it like I wish he would have said yeah fuck yeah yeah like, let's come see on what in. happens yeah <laughs> yeah yeah Taz, Taz would have said fuck yeah brother I'll fucking fuck him up <laughs> dude that's incredible wow in WCW news apparently Hogan uh, was the one who came up with the idea to put together the program where management wants him out a la Steve Austin as a way to get over as a stronger face uh, playing it up that, to everyone as a shoot and Russo and Ed Ferraro went with it so Stone Cold actually was a Hulk Hogan idea in 1999. <laughs> Which, you know, it's true. The Hulkster doesn't tell a lie. I've never heard him lie once, especially not recently. No, why no would he way, do it dude. recently? Dude, the amount of Hogan things we've been tagged in recently of him just saying bullshit He's having is a lying tour. <laughs> it's crazy. An unbelievable run of lies. It's That's... all on different podcasts. It's like one lie. It's like he says some shit, and then it's like one lie per podcast. <laughs> he yeah, just an exclusive. <laughs> he discovered Brock Lesnar. I don't know if you guys heard that Dude, one. Dude, <laughs> he said he fought Brock. It was Brock's first match back out of UFC. Hogan was in TNA. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when Brock came back to WWE, you Holy know, when he came back and fought Cena. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the first time was Cena. <laughs> well, you know, it's one of the same dude. I came up with John Cena. <laughs> Holy, yeah, the line tour is iconic. I mean, this is like something I won't ever forget. So. There was one interview he did where he like, at the beginning of the interview, he said that like his brother was like shot and killed. And then at the end of the interview, he said, ah, I was just, I wasn't true. It wasn't even the end of the interview. It was the it was, three it was sentences right after. after it. It. Oh, was yeah. it? Was it? After it. <laughs> Yeah, he, he tells said, the, he Theo said, no, Vaughn. I'm lying. It was, it was the Theo Vaughn interview. Yeah, yeah, Holy yeah. Shit. Fucking, my brother was fucking shot and killed. I'm lying. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> he did that is unfucking yeah. Dude, I saw the clip of man. him on uh, Joe Rogan and the, uh, Jamie or whatever was Googling stuff and Hogan was like blown away by Google that he's able to Whoa, find Whoa, this stuff. guy's good at finding stuff. I dude. saw that. Yeah, how'd you find Whoa, that, how'd you, how'd you find a picture of my band, brother? You type in Hulk Hogan band. This? First picture that comes up. Yeah, it's Hogan being eaten by a shark. Whoa, how'd you get that, dude? dude Jamie, Jamie turned around and looked at Hogan and said, uh, I'm glad I get to be here when the Hulkster learns about Google. And the Joe Rogan's like, all right, all right Jamie. All right, Jamie. All right, calm down. <laughs> 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 Buzz his balls yeah, yeah. on, goddamn. That's just incredible. Uh, and more WCW news. Uh, Vampiro is currently negotiating his contract. Uh, they wanted to cut. They're cutting a lot of money uh, at this time. I think they wanted to drop him from his four-year, three hundred and fifty thousand dollar per year, per year contract down to like one hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, so Vampiro and the ICP both unhappy about this. Uh, so much so that ICP decided to continue to no show more shows like they already were doing. <laughs> And then they were talking to ECW, uh, but Heyman didn't want to talk to them because they had also, I believe, no-showed ECW shows <laughs> before going to WCW. Uh, but I think in the end, Vampiro does sign like a $200,000 uh, contract. But I, uh, Vampiro, almost uh, almost an ECW guy. He should have yeah. shoot-fought <laughs> Jim Dude, Ain't nobody <laughs> paying that motherfucker $200,000 ECW. You know what I mean? No, you might, no way. I, I, the thought process should be, damn, this is all I got. You know what I mean? Like that situation. Yeah. Either I, I make Fire hours a shot in ECW or $200,000 in WCW. That That is true. Speaking of guys that just leave uh, WCW, James Fullington, uh, otherwise known as Hack, otherwise known as the Sandman, 
who was on a $250,000 per year contract, was also fired. So on the next Observer from November 1st, 99, uh, in ECW News, Sandman returned. <laughs> he, uh, he came back in what was described as one of the largest pops in the history of the promotion. While Paul Heyman had been burying Sandman even before he was fired by WCW and claiming at one point uh, that under no circumstances would he ever bring him back, the feeling <laughs> always was among everyone close that if he was available, he'd be back immediately. <laughs> uh, it seems like, I don't know if he's still on this deal, but the idea that Heyman was bringing him in for only around 1500 per week on the surface sounds more suspicious than you're talking about with a wrestler with a family, but it seems like that's what the word was here. Uh, but WCW had him at 4700 per week, which... God damn, I don't remember him doing much other than the Raven thing and wrestling Bam Bam in WCW, but it sounded like he was doing yeah. pretty sweet, and he got in shape. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I I assume he thought, like, he would probably get a kind of big run over there, but to be fair to him also, I feel like creative changed, like, 90 times by the time he got there. Yeah. So it was like, no one was really ever, unless you, like, knew one of the guys, you weren't really going to get sure. a push. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it was, like, a hardcore division, and then there wasn't, and then there was... And then it, it just turned into, like... Uh, Norman Smiley's like just title funny. Oh yeah, 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 yeah sure. So, yeah. Like division kind of died after that. So, but yeah, uh, Heyman said uh, he, he had been, Heyman had constantly used Sandman as an example of someone who walked out with no notice that would never be welcome back. As an example to the rest of the boys that if they took offers elsewhere and couldn't cut it, there was no job waiting for them. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, oh well. Some things change. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mark Coleman. Do you, I, I, James, you probably know who Mark Coleman is, right? The uh, MMA fighter. I'm not sure if Tony's familiar. Um, I'm not sure if I do. He was uh, Mark I, Coleman's uh, see, OG I'm fucking sure. uh, UFC guy. I'll look it he up. was when they were still tournaments back then. He was fucking fighting guys Dude, like I feel Dan like Severn I, I and see this guy's Don picture. Fry. I feel like I know. Him. Oh, yeah, I Mark, do know he, this guy. Yes. Yeah, he looks like a so caveman. Mark Coleman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is, he does look like Yeah, <laughs> I remember him. All right. Mark Coleman's fucking based. And Mark Coleman supposedly uh, was meant to have a tryout with ECW. Oh, really? Uh, Mark, yes, and this is 99, which is like Mark Coleman is pretty hot still at this point, I'm pretty sure. sure like, I think okay. he was, he might have been on like a bit of a losing streak in 99, uh, but I think like in 2000, he comes back crazy in pride and like has a gnarly pride run. I think he wins, like, two pride tournaments in a row or something like that. Oh, really? Um, so, yeah, he's, like, pretty fucking That's over cool, Mark Coleman. Yeah. Uh, well, Heyman said he thought uh, that Mark Coleman might come to Philadelphia for the next arena show uh, in late November, although Coleman had told people in MMA th uh, that after seeing what the guys in ECW do to their bodies, he wasn't interested at this time. <laughs> He'd rather get his head punched in yeah, repeatedly yeah, yeah. for the yeah, next dude, 10 Yeah, come years. on, man. I, I don't know if that's right. It's a work, brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, come on, man. What did he see? He saw New Jack. He saw Spike Dudley <laughs> dying to Mike Awesome every night. <laughs> Spike Awesome beating Spike Dudley's wife. <laughs> to death. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was right. it. That is fucking He probably looked crazy. up a compilation and he saw a crazy <laughs> Whoa. fucking... Whoa. Yeah. Yes. That was XPW you're talking about. That was all different. Then. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> I, this was uh, something that I thought was super interesting that an indie was doing this in 99. California Championship Wrestling on October 30th in San Diego uh, is happening. And if you mention the Observer, you get $2 off any ticket. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's crazy. We should do that's the opposite. Cool. If you mention the podcast at our show, we charge you more. <laughs> <laughs> There are reports everywhere that Jeff Jarrett held Vince McMahon up for a six-figure payoff to drop ah, the title to the channel at No Mercy. Shoot him in the head with an assault rifle. He had him at gunpoint one time. <laughs> it said that Jarrett has confirmed that he got a huge payoff ahead of the time before he go on, but wouldn't confirm how large. Yeah, as James said, this story has changed uh, a bunch of different times, right? Yeah, it has. It's changed a million times. Jeff Jarrett actually did a whole podcast episode on this. It's a great episode, too. I think it's an early one, right? Yeah, it's one of the early ones. Yeah, you should definitely go check that out. But uh, yes, uh, Jeff Jarrett did hold them up for uh, for money. Uh, and then he very shortly after that is in WCW. Uh, in WWF news, the whole idea behind DX getting back together, which is we'll talk about obviously on this episode of SmackDown, was because WWF was so thin on the heel side, uh, they were going to go with Val Venus and British Bulldog as the top heels because they had nothing else but Triple H. So this was their answer to give that side some depth. So they're... Was and you can see it on this episode because Val Venus is in the main event. Val Venus was about to get pushed to the moon unless they got <laughs> DX back. So it was very close. Isn't that crazy? Close. Isn't that fucking it nuts, is fucking dude? WCW I mean, is about yeah. to make the crazy comeback three to one. Everybody <laughs> made that comeback, bro. Wow! Imagine. Yeah. Holy shit! And I, I'm a big proponent of British Bulldog in the jeans, especially with the Mean Street Posse, but. 
Val Venus and British Bulldog as the top two guys against Rock, Austin, <laughs> Undertaker. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. And I think Triple H might have been a face. Too. Oh, no, I guess he was a heel still here, too. But, yeah, that's fucking scary. That's a scary uh, reality that we almost lived in there. Um, from the Observer, November 8th, 99. A couple more things here. Uh, in Japan news... The first H versus fake Hayabusa match at Kurikan Hall before 200, <laughs> uh, sorry, before 2,150 fans saw them do the much uh, Bollywood fart spot where fake Hayabusa <laughs> right. put fire up H's butt. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and then during the match, H broke a, hun- uh, a $100,000 television camera on the ring post. Oh. <laughs> well, it sounds like things are going good over there, I think. <laughs> I don't with the much Bollywood fart spot, <laughs> legendary fart spot that they had going what the uh, hell? for H versus Fake Hayabusa. Um, and last thing here in WWF news, we've talked about this before, but it's always funny when I see this in the news itself. Uh, in one of the sillier stories we've heard, uh, Red Smeltzer, Walmart has pulled all the Al Snow dolls after a complaint about the doll making light of violence against women, stemming from the complaints from Sabrina Parton an assistant professor of communications at uh, Kennesaw State University in Georgia, and also the manager of a Walmart in Georgia, led the company pulling Al Snow dolls, uh, which comes with a female mannequin head reading, Help Me, scrawled backwards across the forehead. Uh, She complained that the doll sent a message about brutalization towards women. Walmart, after reviewing the complaint, decided that the doll was a questionable item, so they announced they were removing it from all the shelves, probably permanently. Parton says she could understand if this was a novelty item made to kids, but the label says it recommended for children four and above, and it makes it terrible. So Al Snow really fucking shit up again here. <laughs> <laughs> I, think we talk, I, yeah, I think we mentioned this before. We did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we've talked. Because I think we've watched, I, we might have watched the Raw where Bob Holly comes out with the figure and talks about it on the show. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, that's fucked up. It is, uh, I remember this happening as a kid because I remember being like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, 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 I had the figure too, so I got it before. Dude, I'm they looking at it right them. now. It's like a Barbie doll head. What the hell? Yeah, yeah. It's it's legit just a doll head in the fucking packaging. It's this crazy looking. Insane. Yeah, it is crazy. But that is it for the wrestling news at the time. Now it's talk, time to talk about SmackDown from October 28th, 1999. All right. Let us get into SmackDown. Everybody on the ground. Da, da, da. Everybody on, on, the on the ground. ground da, Everybody da, on the ground. Da, 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 da. I like this, this song. Is awesome. I love this nee, fucking nee, intro, man. Nee, 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 this nee, intro nee. is pure wrestling to me. I love this so much. You guys know this was sang by Jim Johnston. It was sang by Jim Johnston, and he says there's no real words. Okay. Well, that's what he says. He says he just got on the mic and started yelling. I know what he said. But uh, lying's fun sometimes, and I know <laughs> I there's know, words. This. If he does not say everybody on the ground in the beginning, then I have no idea how that <laughs> happened like that. Has anyone ever heard anything else than everybody on the ground in the first part there? Has that's anyone what it's ever- called. It's literally called everybody, right? Or is it not? Well, I don't know. If, Tony, I actually don't know if that's what it was just called. Everybody like, calls it. Like, if, if you look up everybody on the ground, it's like. That's all you get is a SmackDown song. So sure, gotta, but, yeah, but I mean, there's definitely some fucking words in there somewhere. <laughs> there's got everybody yeah. on the ground. Everybody he on the ground. DB DB Dooley Dot. Yeah, what's the rest? <laughs> everybody on the <laughs> ground. <laughs> know your role is shut your mouth. Suppose okay, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna blow your minds here. All right, here we go. Uh, according to official sources, the song is called Smack. It is not called Everybody on the Ground. But the first words oh, it is in called the song. Smack. <laughs> Are everybody on the ground? <laughs> I thought I I think so too. Everybody, everybody, everybody. <laughs> it's John Lord, I just singing it. Okay, 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 okay. Mouth. Here's the lyrics. That's that, a good guess, James. Here's what Spotify tells me because Spotify has the lyrics joint. Okay, okay. Here, here's the Spotify picture. Okay, every every move on the ground. Every move on the ground. Every move on the ground. Every Every move on the ground. Now I gotta hear it again. That's worse. I mean, here's what Jim Johnson said. I was hearing some early metal stuff and was always shocked at how bad the vocals were. All right, first off, 
Come on. That's fine. And up. that the Watch lyrics him. were absolutely <laughs> unintelligible. All right, man. Come on. The theme I had written was <laughs> in this cool, style, man. and I couldn't find a singer, so I did it myself. There are no lyrics. I just sang gibberish. I had fans contact me for a lyric sheet, which, of course, I cannot provide because there's no lyrics. Oh, Every that's, move on the ground. Yeah, that's, 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 that's me when I'm lying, right? Tell me, like, I see the lyrics right here. Chana, 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 chana. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, about about call, I'm about to call Jim Johnson and go, Why are you? Why are you? You got to get the middle part because you. <laughs> with Kane? Dead, yeah, that dead, part's dead, the best part. Kane, the move King on part. the crowd. Chana, 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 chana. Yeah, that's, that's, wow. that's hot right there, man. Thank you, Jim Everybody Johnson, regardless. Crowd. This is a classic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> China, 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 China. Godfather doing the the ho train joint. The ho train, yeah. yeah. Dude, I had the rock smells the air. That's one of the stone cold ones. bashing a beer can on his head. He's got two beers, Austin, at the end. It's crazy with the green. You came with the beard. <laughs> oh, that's it right there, man. That, that's it. Ding, ding. Yeah, it's a rich <laughs> shirt. Right the pyro goes crazy too. It's yeah, awesome. the pyro is Dude. great, and it is uh, right side Ovaltron for this one, by the way, oh, not yes. left side. Yeah, this intro had to be the most insane pyro ever for anything ever of all time in WWE history. They legit. How does somebody not get hurt on this? They legit had sound effects for the pyro. They have to, yeah, they do because it goes <laughs> like a nuke is about to go off. <laughs> 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 like the Dudley's. Yeah, man, this is crazy, man. That's and what it sounds like. Stretch, stretches a little SmackDown ball and goes away oh, and then shows the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I'm if I'm going by on like public access TV and I'm like, holy fucking shit, what is this, dude? Man? Yeah. I just smoked crack in yeah, this is visual awesome. form. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they don't slow down pretty much all night. They keep that same tempo pretty much the entire night. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, this, uh, SmackDown only had been around for like a month at this point. I think it starts in August. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, tonight we're going to start off with the D-Generation X Town Hall. Are you ready? They're dun, back. Dun, dun, They're dun, back, dun. baby. DX is back. Fuck you, Val Venus. <laughs> <laughs> I shut the world on Monday night. I did it. Triple H had to shut that shit down quick. <laughs> yeah, no goddamn he way. He said we cannot lose Val the Venus WCW. Beating me. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's X-Pac, Billy Gunn, Road Dog, and Triple H. And Road Dog is out here uh, in the khakis uh, doing the cro- very tiny crotch chops. Triple H wearing the tightest shirt he could find because he didn't want to wear a DX shirt for some Triple reason. classic Triple H shirt, by the way. <laughs> very tight black shirt, yes. Just black, just tight and black. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Billy Gunn wearing a shirt. Uh, I think it said uh, all that and a whole lot of ass on the back. <laughs> yeah, he said all that, dot, dot, dot. It says, it says yeah. all this on the front. And a yes. really great ass too is what it oh, says. Oh, that one is. And a really great ass too. That's what it is. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Which because I was like, I, we got to figure out a way how to see this. So I was stopped and zoomed in and looked at it. Yeah, so I was all up in his ass. So. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, DX broke back up as you mentioned earlier in the uh, observer notes for for this time period. DX yes. had broken up, uh, but as you said, they have no fucking heels on this show, so they put them all <laughs> in one group and said, "We're bringing it back." DX is here. DX broke up in the same year that they came back. They broke up at WrestleMania 15, which was in April. Yeah, they overestimated the Val <laughs> Venus. So they said, no fucking way. No way. Well, British Bulldog was supposed to change the game, sadly. But it, they uh, came back in jeans. That what way. happened? Dude, he looks fucking great. What are you talking about? Yeah, looks well, it looks like you can't carry the fucking torch. Only Triple H can <laughs> well, do that, brother. That was Triple H's response. <laughs> uh, so they cut a promo here to start off the show. Uh, they they actually go pretty quick to the point here. I was pretty surprised by that. Um, basically, did you, did you like Triple H talking and then in the middle of him talking, the SmackDown DX nameplate? Whoosh. Dude, I had that right It's so dude, loud, crazy. too. It's a... Yeah. Whoosh, whoosh. All the sound effects are so loud, but I remember all the sound effects, too, so that's Me probably too. a good thing. Um, but yeah, so Triple H, I mean, ba- they basically run down the top of the card here. Who is a face on the show and who can we run down uh, so we can get into some feuds Anybody. ASAP? Because yeah. Val Venus and British Bulldog are not going to cut it with these guys. I'll tell you that fucking much. No, God, dude, no fucking goddamn way, man. <laughs> I was waiting for the rock and goddamn Val and Venus, so you know. Triple H says, we are D-Generation X and we make the rules and then we break them. What is the fucking point? What is that? <laughs> Why do you make the rules just to break the rules? We will What's break the them. <laughs> no, Hunter, don't make the rules then. Just don't make them. <laughs> yeah, so Triple H says there will be no stone left unturned. I said, okay, all right, stone cold. No, uh, no, no cold stone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that so can't cool. be here. Oh, oh. <laughs> and then he said, and there will be no rock left Unpulverized. <laughs> ah! <laughs> right, man, that's not even a phrase. <laughs> that's crazy. He, 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 that was must have been off the cuff. He had another line. And he was like unpulverized. Uh, and yeah, and he said, 
so he he's the WF champion at the point, Triple H. Correct. And X Pac, by the way, decides that it's time for him to cut a promo now. <laughs> I guess the idea here was that like they need to set them all up as individual heels instead of j- just being Triple H and his friends. It needs to right. be Triple H, X Pac, Billy. You know, so they can do their they own have thing. Stock. Right. Yes. Um, yes. Which I wrote down here. I have no clue why X Pac is fucking talking right now. <laughs> I get very excited anytime I see X Pac grab a microphone. Actually, get a <laughs> I couldn't believe he was talking out here tonight. Who lets this guy have a mic? Uh, but X Pac says there will be a new member of DX here tonight. Mm, new member? That could be any. Ah, <laughs> a new recruit. Can't believe it. Uh, Billy. One of my sources told me who it is. <laughs> we hear that all night long. It is sources. <laughs> Sources. So Billy Gunn then cuts a promo. That's right. Everybody's going to cut one tonight. I wasn't as excited for this Dude, one. Billy Gunn's promo here is just nuts, bro. <laughs> now to a little business. <laughs> Last Monday night. He's like, I don't know whose voice he does here, but it doesn't It doesn't sound like his own. Yeah, I don't but know he if talks he's about Stone Cold or not. I couldn't tell. Like, it sounded is like his p- voice was, like, shaking. Is this pre or post Rock making fun of him? That's a whole different guy. Oh, oh wow. I don't know. Good question. I think it's post cuz I think yeah. he'd already won King yeah, of the Ring, right? right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this is a whole different guy, but he's uh <laughs> he says he got a little taste of Stone Cold uh on Monday night and he liked it. So tonight he wants to kick Stone Cold Steve Austin's ass. He liked it. <laughs> I like Stone Cold's ass. It tastes pretty good. <laughs> I want you, I, I just, like I guess maybe <laughs> I guess maybe back then it made more sense. What? Or Billy Gunn's like, I'll kick Stone Cold's ass. Me watching he it now. Hey, yo. This guy yeah. thinks he would kick Stone Cold's ass. <laughs> he will run and then you I was over like, with 13 cars. I was like, who who else is left? Like, they're, they're going to talk about The Rock, right? And then Road Dog grabs the mic. I go, there is no <laughs> way Road Dog is going to talk about The Rock right now. He's got it. He's don't, what are you talking about? He's got this. Not only does he talk about The Rock, James, but he is... He is so out of his fucking mind here. This is... I don't know what he thought. Like, if The Rock was here to respond to this, Road Dog would have had to retire. <laughs> because it would have been a fucking... Tra- he would have trampled him. This is like the most insane promo ever, Johnny. Oh, my gosh. All right, so Road Dog says that he is going to kick <laughs> The Rock's A double crooked letter. <laughs> of course. Road Dog says that he left The Rock in a puddle of his own... Talentless puke. Oh no, it gets worse. It uh, somehow gets worse. Road Dog then says that he has one fear, <laughs> and that fear <laughs> is because he knows how much The Rock likes to shine <laughs> things up and stick it up people's asses. Right? <laughs> I okay. said, "There's no I'm, way. I'm, There's no I'm, way." I'm with you, Road Dog. What were you? What Road you Dog then turns to the side and. <laughs> Pantomize, (laughs) (laughs) fucking somebody in the ass doggy style and said that the rock knows how he likes to do his finish and he's thrusting as he says this you know i like to do my finish (laughs) dude i could first i could believe he said my finish (laughs) Ah. Uh, and he says that his one fear is that the rock might actually like it when he slams uh, him on his back. Uno, dos, tres. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very unrelenting bitch. And, dude, they also keep cutting to these two guys in the front row that are losing their minds, crotch chopping and throwing up the X. Yeah. Like, over and over again, they keep showing these two dudes. Yeah, we like when Rodog fucks people in the ass. <laughs> yeah, fuck up, Brody. <laughs> <laughs> Triple H thing calls out Vince McMahon. Yeah, get your ass out here and bow down to the masters. Get it, get it, because that's in their song. Uh, the theme that, song, the song. Everybody on yeah. the ground. They should, yeah, they should do that with everybody on the ground. Watch out, watch out, watch out! Vince McMahon, get out here! Turn, 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 turn. Vince is singing it. Road dogs fucking the air. Turn, turn, turn. Xbox Dude. seems like more of a chutta chutta guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Give him the mic, chutta chutta chutta. <laughs> so Vince comes out and uh, he says, "Well, he does say everybody on the ground actually." Does and he? Triple H says, "You're right, Vince." <laughs> and you know what? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna have Val Venus run tonight's matches. <laughs> no, and Vince says, "Well, no, actually, please. what I'm doing is shutting the company down." <laughs> I'd rather sell to Ted Turner than ever fucking do that. But Triple H <laughs> tells Vince that they pulled his punk card. 
Oh, fuck. They're yeah. taking over, and they put how, Vince McMahon on notice. How is that? How is that? How is that? <laughs> well, how do you do this? How do you what do, do you, what this? Do you mean? What, what, what oh, do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, they put him on notice because he's the WWF champion, and, well, Vince mm. could never just strip the WWF champion. He's never done that before. Of course not. He hasn't done that <laughs> ever. All the time. Ever. <laughs> ever. Always. <laughs> Yeah, and so DX is in charge now. Yes, DX is in charge, and Vince McMahon is out of a job, apparently. Uh, DX making the rules, breaking them, making the laws, breaking them. (laughs) (laughs) Who's going to follow this lead? CZW, break the law. (laughs) You know what I really like about this is that Vince is the baby face here. He is. That usually doesn't fucking happen, especially in an era with Stone Cold in it. Uh, other than the one time Steve Austin turned heel and Vince had to try to get him back on his side. Holy shit, yeah. But the, the crowd, like, wants to like him, too, which is even funnier. Vince says, on behalf of the fans here in Springfield, Massachusetts, <laughs> on behalf oh, yeah, of woo. all the WWF fans around the world. That's us. We got two words for you. Suck it. <laughs> yeah, we got two words for you. Dude, he, he's like, his eyes are about to pop out of his head. He throws his hand forward. Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> I like to imagine he came up with that. Like, he came up with the sucker thing, yeah? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Vince, in this promo, by the way, is screaming so loud. This doesn't happen very often. Vince is screaming so loud that the mic is peaking. It's breaking the the feed of the mic. He was so fired up to say suck it. He's been waiting all day, like, backstage. Suck it. Yeah, I want to suck it. (laughs) (laughs) That was a rib, too. DX had no clue what it said. They said, oh, well, fuck it. We got three words for you. We're taking over. (laughs) And then Stevie Richards said the big blue meanie at the ring. (laughs) Holy man, what a, uh, what a, I guess if you want to call it a DX promo here, it felt more like four guys saying something than any DX promo I ever remember. I, I, I agree that you, to your point that they wanted to make them feel like not just Triple H's jabrones, but somehow that made them talking, made them feel more like Triple H's jabrones. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're, they're all just setting themselves up to take the fall for Triple H. Well, Edge and Christian are on the way to the ring. Oh, that's good. And yeah, Edge has his, his infamous everybody has some edge in them shirt. That's real shit, man. <laughs> I think about that often. I'm gonna get you one. Everybody has some Christian in them was the other shirt. Everybody has some Christian. Well the JVC Kaboom of the Week brought to you by the JVC Kaboom box. Dude, look at the tubes, look at the tubes. Shane McMahon leaps off the cage onto the Mean Street Posse to save his sister. Dude, he leaps, he climbs up the cage, jumps off of it, all in business outfit. <laughs> How the fuck? Well, Test and Stephanie are walking, holding hands. Oh, well, that's lovely. At this point, they're still two regular humans. This is crazy to see. Yeah, they're they're normal. They have not been sent down the path of <laughs> destruction and doom that is waiting it's for coming. them. It's coming. It is coming. So this is right after Stephanie had amnesia from British Bulldog in jeans, throwing a metal trash container backwards and hitting Stephanie in the head. Dude, coming out of these stories back then must have been like a hoot. You know what I mean? Must just have been awesome just whatever. Yeah, we're going to hit you with a can. You're going to have amnesia. We're going to give Stephanie amnesia this month. <laughs> She's going to forget Tess. Then Shane, but you Pat have to Patterson, jump off a cage. Yeah, this all sounds fun. <laughs> Shane pitched that one. Uh, Pat Patterson and Briscoe give them hugs and handshakes and stuff. And Pat Patterson says he's he's glad that Stephanie is feeling better. They're dressed oh, crazy. Good. I've never seen Tess dress like this lately. This is crazy. He's a uh, formal, formal test. He's going to jump off a game. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have Edge and Christian versus Too Cool. And I think they're just becoming Too Cool as yeah, well. Like brand like, new Too Cool. Yeah, they, they, were, just left- they were too much before. Well, before this match, we get the Holly Cousins come out here to do commentary. This is... A fucking crazy two looking guys, man. Bob Holly in the black jeans, no shirt, murder on his mind. <laughs> Crash, Holly, <laughs> Crash Holly in orange bandana, gigantic white shirt and jeans. They sit down with Jerry Lawler and Michael Cole, which is a nightmare blunt rotation. <laughs> this table is fucked up. It smells like shit over here, man. <laughs> well, they're the Bob- tag team champions currently. <laughs> Did you remember that they were tag champions? I don't. I don't remember them being tag champs at all. Um, no, I don't really remember it. I remember like. like- Short, where's it like short, right? I feel like it was it's, short. I, I imagine it doesn't last. I imagine Magic yeah. Christian get these fucking belts back very quickly. But yeah, I remember like Bob Holly having a hardcore title, Crash having a hardcore title. I don't remember them being tag champs, but it, it, I don't mind it. Grandmaster Sexay comes up to Michael Cole on commentary and says, You better get our name right this week. And Cole says, Oh, well, Brian Christopher and Scott Taylor. <laughs> no, no, it, too cool. 
cool. Don't refer to them as too much, Lawler says. And Bob Holly says, well, I don't know if you guys know about super heavyweights. I'm a super heavyweight. <laughs> He's a super heavyweight. These guys are not super heavyweights. I'm going to fucking kill at least three of these guys on the back after this match. They better not come backstage and go super heavyweight ass kicking from me. <laughs> Dude, he, he calls Edge a long-haired broom handle. That's Bob Holly fucking dissing you. Yeah, for some reason he is, I guess because they're going into the gimmick a lot, like the super heavyweight thing that Crash is doing, right? So, like, mm -hmm. first off, seeing Bob agree with Crash is crazy. I don't remember that too much. Most of the time he's like, you're not a super he heavyweight, stop him. fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah, like, well, yeah. I don't know how the fuck you're doing this. Uh, Crash but he's, does have the scale as well, by the way. Yeah, he's super into this. Uh, the scale actually comes into play later on in the match, too. It does. Yeah, you're right. Um, but, yeah, Scotty gives Christian. I mean, there's some pretty crazy shit in this match, to, to be fair. Um, they, they're coming up with tag moves here. Yeah, I definitely think this is four guys that like are on the undercard. They're trying to make it in for themselves. Like this is definitely like a new era of wrestling starting to creep its way up the, the, sure. the ladder. I guess you could say Smash here. Mouth style. Like they're not taking it easy. They're not NWAing tag matches here. No, yeah, they're going nuts if they can. They got four, then you're gonna get four some crazy ass shit. <laughs> they they actually just watched Headbangers versus Terry Funk and <laughs> Gold Scorpio. Funk <laughs> changes the game again. <laughs> So Scotty gives Christian an alley oop into the top rope, which I thought was, was cool. That was awesome. Scotty Zuati, by the way, in red shorts. That's Scott Taylor. Sorry. And if you want to call That's him that, he's, he's Scott too hot. It's not when do, Scott Taylor. When Scott, does he Scott come? Taylor. Yeah, I was going to say, when does he become Scotty Zuati? And when, do he, when does this other guy become Grandmaster <laughs> He's Brian Christopher. You know, I guess, yeah, he's not even Grandmaster <laughs> Sexy right now. He's no, fucking he's Brian just Christopher. Brian Christopher is Scott Taylor. This is he's Scott too, too sexy hot. sexy Brian Christopher, yeah. Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> like, I, I don't know how many times I've seen these guys not be in, like, full gimmick. But they're... They still do the dance all the, and all this shit coming that's, down. They, that's exactly what I was going to say. They're doing all the, like, the too cool dance stuff that gets over later. They're just heels here. Um, Scotty even does the worm here. Um, no taunt. No taunt. And Coax is just a regular first, move. Yeah, Cole acts yeah. like he's never seen it. It might have been the first time he's done it on TV, at least. Uh, I saw. I, I was reading recently on something. I don't remember what it was. It was like a maybe it was an interview or something that Scotty Too Hotty okay. did. Um, and the worm thing actually came from Jerry Lawler. What? Yeah. So like he did not the move itself, but the the W O R M thing. Oh. Yeah. Okay, that probably makes sense. So yeah. Scotty was doing it, and then on commentary one time, Jerry Lawler said W O R M is the worm. Oh. And, oh, that's uh, awesome. and Scotty, that's crazy. yeah, Scotty said he asked him to keep doing it, and then yeah. he kept doing it, and then the crowd started doing it because they kept hearing of course, it on TV. They hear it. Yeah, yeah, and that made his said, whole career. Damn, bro. it did. Yeah, it really did. That one thing, like, really no changed everything. Way. Um, so yeah, so I guess I don't, I don't want to say it's the first time he's ever done it right here, but it was definitely one of the first times that he's sure, starting yeah, to do yeah. it here. That's very cool. Well, I was, uh, I just want to put this out. I was looking up the Holly Cousins, like when they won the the tag titles, because I was like, I sure. It was very short lived. So yeah, October uh, a week before October eighteenth, they beat uh, Crash and Hardcore won the titles from Rock and Sock Connection. Mankind refused to tag into the match, and Triple H interfered in the match. So shenanigans. Oh, I think is that I, for, for some reason I remember like Mankind was just like a sad sack sitting on the stairs during that match. Sure, and then uh, they held him for two weeks before dropping back to Mankind and his new partner Al Snow on November. God, 4th. <laughs> damn it! <laughs> so we get to see one of the only times they're holding the titles here. That's pretty. Yeah, crazy. exactly. This was like the one okay. time they held the titles on TV. Fucking man. hell, <laughs> Al. Uh, Brian Christopher then gives Christian Holy. a fucking sunset flip power bomb <laughs> off the apron to the floor and then does a little dance. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's the real shit, man. I was so fucking fired up because I was like, okay, usually, you know, someone does the sunset flip to the floor, they get cut off and don't do it. He sent it, killed him, and then went, hey, and so I did. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's fucking nuts. So Cole on commentary says, uh, Brian Christopher, uh, the King's kid, no, I meant Brian Christopher, with a tremendous um, maneuver. Ah! <laughs> and King said, hey, what did you... Hey, Cole, you better watch your mouth. He says, there's only one set of the King's DNA. What? I don't know what that meant, but that's all right. I'm going to lose my keys. <laughs> uh, too Cool then does a powerbomb edge o double team move, which I thought was very cool. Yeah, double sit-out powerbomb. That was fucking sweet. They uh, they show a shot of Bob Holly a commentary, and this man has the most unbelievable hairline in the history of fucking pro wrestling. It is <laughs> one of the One of the crazy. goats. One of the goats. It is fucking crazy. <laughs> Brian Christopher then hits a missile drop kick as Scotty holds Christian. I mean, they got some moves here, man. Yeah, man, it's very cool. Uh, Christian gets a hope spot, reverse DDT off the second. The spin out version, which was very fucking cool too. Yeah, that was cool. There was a lot of cool cool moves off the second, like around this area. Like Devon had yeah. one too. And, uh, oh, the neck breaker. Yeah, the neck yeah, breaker. Sure. It was cool stuff on the second. 
Uh, Scotty misses a moonsault, but lands on his feet and then Edge spears him for a two. That was cool as hell. I, uh, that's scary as hell, landing on your feet off of flipping off the top rope. I yeah. always imagine someone's going to blow their shit out. Crash then gets off commentary and hits Edge with the biggest scale he could find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bob on commentary says, Crash, do what you gotta do, buddy. Which it, it signals Crash Holly to run up to ringside and smash Edge in the head with a scale. <laughs> do what you have to do for Crash means to take a big scale from the doctor's office and hit him in the head with it. <laughs> and smash someone with it, yes. Uh, this allows Scotty Too Hotty, or Scott Too Hot, as they say on commentary in this match, or Scott Taylor. To <laughs> pin Edge. Show whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, he pins him, and then the Hollies get into the ring. They start fucking wailing on Edge and Christian here, stomping him out. And then Too Cool hit the death they sentence on Edge. It. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was so crazy, man. That shit was so crazy. Said, what the hell, dude? Hit the fucking death sentence. Get the fuck out of here, man. That's awesome. I was so fired up, man. I was like, dude, this is the best shit ever. Yeah, what a great opener. That was cool. And they left them with their heat, too. No one came out and made the save. Edge of Christian just got messed up, like, uh, murdered here. And then they leave. So last Monday, Big Boss Man. All right, hold on. Let me just take a second here. That's what I didn't make sure everybody understands what's going on There's a here. lot so here. We've, we've talked about in the past about the Big Boss Man and uh, the Big Show's uh, dad's funeral, of course, which is one of right. the more infamous uh, segments. Yeah, but there's sure actually shit that's even crazier than that, if you can believe it. Um, <laughs> so last Monday, Big Boss Man hit Big Show in the head with a hammer. <laughs> and knocked him off the ramp, fell straight off the ramp. And then and not only that, he yes. took Big Show's dad's family heirloom watch. Correct. <laughs> put it on a fucking anvil like he's yeah, playing wheeled, RuneScape. <laughs> they like wheeled a, an anvil out onto the stage. The biggest comedic giant anvil you've ever <laughs> seen in your life. They should have dropped that on the big show <laughs> off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Raw style on the Xbox. Xbox. <laughs> yeah, the stars floating around his head. <laughs> chicken fingers. <laughs> Hit him with the hammer. So he hits Big Show with the head with a hammer, wheels out an anvil, takes his dad's watch. With Prince Albert. <laughs> Prince Albert is here and he's fucking very hairy. <laughs> and bald. <laughs> and he takes the watch. He couldn't just destroy the watch. He took the watch, put it on the anvil, and then hit the watch with the hammer. Repeatedly. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> like he went to town I on this thing. I swear the first time he hits the watch, the watch flies off and he just keeps hitting the hit. No, like think oh. the watch moves and falls off and he just keeps hitting the anvil. And that is Albert is very hairy. <laughs> Dude, but he's so he's so fucking hairy. <laughs> we we get to talk about this a little later. Big Boss Man, it must have been the like writing stories for the Big Boss Man in this era must have been the what craziest shit that been ever. So fun. That he been killed this man's dog and fed it to him. <laughs> he knocked Big Show out with a hammer. He stole his dad's fucking casket at his funeral. Yeah. He that is had an anvil. He had Albert. I mean, like really, <laughs> Albert, Albert is very hairy. <laughs> he replaces Albert with another big bald man in Bull Buchanan soon. It gets yeah. We're gonna talk about Big Boss Man later. I'm excited. That's one of my favorite parts of the show. Him wheeling it's, out the anvil caught me so off guard. It caught me so off guard. What we're talking about later is the definition of being caught off guard for me. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to talk about. It's, it's genuinely a lot. So I'm excited to talk about Big Boss Man. What a fucking crazy guy. He was Big Bubba losing a hug in a WCW. <laughs> he came over and he Dude, killed someone's dog. How different he looks from WCW to here is actually crazy. He lost a ton of weight. He did. Yeah, he was ready to go. Yeah. With man. Albert. So Harry. <laughs> Please, Prince Albert. Oh, sorry. Yeah, let me put respect on his name. Cockball. <laughs> JR asked the big show backstage about the anvil being there. Yeah. And <laughs> big show doesn't have a fucking answer, unlike anyone else. Uh, I don't know. No one knows the answer to this. J yeah, JR says, Big show, uh, what are you going to do about the boss man? And big show says, uh. <laughs> What are you going to do about the boss man? Fuck him, I know. I, no one's been able to stop the boss man. He's the champion. No. He's fucking killing everybody's dad and dog. My daddy, my daddy. <laughs> so Big Show says, he's got to leave, Jay. I got to leave. Because if he doesn't, he's going to do something he's going to regret for the rest of his life. Holy shit, he might have to wrestle Prince Albert. <laughs> he's so hairy. Dude, he's so fucking hairy. So after that... 
We got to Mark Henry <laughs> dressing room J. <laughs> Mark Henry comes out of the showers, I guess, in the dressing room, all wet, naked. It's <laughs> very naked. wet. <laughs> You know, I thought it was the shower too, James, but he was pouring water no, over his head. So I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. He, he, was was, he, was, he overheated in the uh, dressing room. Yeah. So he sure. What were you water. saying, Tony? Oh, he's just having sex, bro. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah you're right, Tony. <laughs> overheated back there. You're overthinking this. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. Or there was a shower back there. <laughs> in the dressing <laughs> room, which is totally normal. Tony. I don't ever right, last long clean. enough, Tony, to be all sweaty like that, so I don't know. <laughs> Well, you're not sexually chocolate. Well, Tony, I just want you to know also, they stop referring to him as Mark Henry later, and they just refer to him as sexual <laughs> chocolate. You're right. They hit the body's level of sexual <laughs> chocolate. They probably did that around you're the same right. time. They just started calling him Mr. S. <laughs> so yeah, he's not Billy right. Gunn anymore. <laughs> you're right. Well, Mark Henry is fucking very wet, naked, naked. fucking towel. He's <laughs> sexual <laughs> chocolate. And he says goodbye to some women. Yes. And you know, it didn't hit me until later on who these women were, or how Mark I Henry. I had no idea. I had into, no idea. Mark Henry came into play with these women. But, anyways, he leaves, he says goodbye to these women, and he welcomes in the second round of women. <laughs> he says, All right, round two. And Lawler says, Those are two of the skankiest hoes I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> what the so fuck did they do to you? That's so fu fucked up, bro. So, again, Holy. him saying that without me understanding, it's not, it doesn't make it any better. Tell him, tell him. Let him know where these women come from. Okay, so these women are... Or, or, or at least wait, wait, where do you guys think they come from? Fans, <laughs> listen to this. Just thinking, where do you think those come from? The answer is the Godfather, right? Well, at, at one point it might have been, but these are, of course, viscerous hoes. <laughs> he's an aggressive <laughs> pimp. He's an aggressive pimp. Not, he's not <laughs> nice like the Godfather. He's an aggressive, mean pimp, and he is with Mark Henry. They're a tag team, and that's where these skankiest hoes I've ever seen have come from. SmackDown is brought to you by Duncan. <laughs> Hardcore fucking no, yo-yos. It's, it's, it's not. It's not the good Duncan. Come on now. Yeah, hardcore fucking yo-yos. You want to yo-yo it up? Line of yo-yos. There's fucking <laughs> stupid yo-yos and there's Duncan yo-yos. Make your choice. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be DPW's catchphrase. There's Jesus fucking side. shitty wrestling and there's DPW. Make your choice. <laughs> that is our catchphrase, actually. Smackdown's running by Duncan Twix <laughs> bars. <laughs> <laughs> WWF the music volume four based volume four at Target. Oh, old Target logo, too. And what happened to the wall? <laughs> what happened to Camelot? <laughs> the, wall, <laughs> the wall's not here. Uh, and then after that, it, dude, this is the craziest string of shit I've ever seen in my entire life. So next up, we have Chris Jericho versus Stevie Richards. Oh, is that what it was? <laughs> well, I think that's what it was supposed to be. <laughs> But uh, so, okay, so Jericho, let's look at this out of the way first. Jericho yes. comes out, Girl Tron, fucking goat. This is the fucking goat. Tremendous. Of all yeah. Yeah, great gear, too. Goat. Peak Jericho entrance. Yeah, he looks yeah. great. Yeah, beard looks good. He looks very yeah, good. Hair is crazy. He looks awesome. And his work rate is absolutely fucking insane. Uh, Jericho cuts a promo before the match to lay out all of this. The smack is down. <laughs> yeah, he does something here. <laughs> and he lays, he lays the smack down in a way that tells us that Stevie... Cost them their tag match, I assume, last week. And Stevie challenged yes. them to a match here tonight. Right. I think that's... Or, or Jericho's challenging Stevie because of the tag no, match? Stevie oh, no, Stevie no, challenged him. Stevie right. challenged him to the yeah, match. He, yeah. Jericho walked in and he saw posters that said, <laughs> Stevie wants to wrestle Jericho. Stevie matched tonight and Jericho said, okay, I'm in. Yes. So Jericho's in the middle of his feud with China for the Intercontinental Championship. Right. I assume the way that they would do this back in the day was, was there anybody that would want to work with China? And then Jericho said, I'll do anything to be on TV. And Stevie Richards said, I will also do anything to be on TV. <laughs> I will do even more anything <laughs> to be on TV. And here it is tonight. So we, my time yeah. hits for China. Yes. Yes, it is. Very strange. And then here comes someone dressed as China and it's fucking Stevie Richards. <laughs> And I just want to put this out there. This is not Stevie Richards in China wig 
Well, it is Stevie Richards' China it wig, is, but it's not right. Stevie Richards in just a China wig, and then the rest of it is Stevie Richards. Right. No. Stevie Richards <laughs> has the whole <laughs> outfit on. Now, when you say the whole outfit... He has the assless chaps. <laughs> Dude, he's the whitest fucking ass cheeks <laughs> ever. <laughs> I've never seen someone so dedicated to the fucking cause in my life. Yeah, man, but why is he kind of, you know... He's kind of crazy, yeah, he's kind of hit. Oh, he's kind of looking, yeah. I mean, the <laughs> ass was looking nuts. Right, Tony? Stevie yeah, Tony walked right by that. the camera, crazy shire. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Jay Lawler said, let me see that again. <laughs> what was that shot? <laughs> I lost my keys in your ass. Ah! Yeah, he looks crazy here, man. He's really, I mean, dedicated to being China here in this match. Uh, and yeah, we get Chris Jericho versus Stevie China Richards, <laughs> which is just Chris Jericho uh, fucking suplexing Stevie on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every gnarly. match has had something like we're suplexing people on the floor. We're power bombing them on the apron. We're sunset flipping. Yeah, crazy. What happened? You think someone did something insane on a uh, WCW and they said, oh, we all got it. We all got to tap into this. Yeah. Things are starting to change, man. The work rate's coming out and everybody and now things yeah. would never go back. So Jericho knocks him off the apron, hot start, suplex on the outside. There's a kid in the crowd that is fucking wearing the Steve Austin shirt backwards. What? <laughs> it's got the skull on the front in the WWF logo. Oh, no. Oh, oh yeah. God, buddy. I was like, man, you turn that around for you, buddy. Yeah, Lawler talking about Stevie says, is that a tan line or what? <laughs> <laughs> He, like, flips out over it. And then he says, oh, well, by the way, my sources can confirm that the rock is on the way. Sources? Ah, yeah, sources. Cold. They both have fucking sources all goddamn night long. So China comes down with the cat. Miss Kitty. Don't ever talk to me or my son ever again. <laughs> <laughs> There's three people I'm watching that are dressed like China on this show. Dude, this what is straight from SpongeBob with everyone's Squidward. <laughs> everyone's China. <laughs> China, China, China. China then hits Y2J with the belt. Yeah, Stevie like sunset flipped him and Jericho was trying to hold on the ropes to block it. And then China fucking hit him with the belt and rolled back. And Stevie Richards rolls him up for the win. He wins, but gets no music. Well, because they have to do the all China Invitational in the ring after the match. But no music for anybody. All, all China's please get in the ring. Report to the ring. Stevie hugs China, and then China punches him to fucking death. <laughs> he dies, too. He fucking collapses, and then China's music plays, and her and Miss Kitty uh, leave. And then the music shuts off. <laughs> And I'm like, what is, what now? Well, the music shot because Chris Jericho got back in the ring to hit Stevie China Richards with a double power bomb. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you gonna just stomp him out a little bit. Why do Jay double power bomb and then rips his boobs to shreds? <laughs> yeah, all the stuffing flying all over the place. Yeah, man. Poor Stevie. Well, it doesn't stop there because we go backstage and The Rock has arrived. Yeah. The Rock. Well, all their sources were right. Well, Road Dog comes up off camera and The Rock looks at him. He immediately gets in a fighter stance. <laughs> He's, he wants to go. He knows he can't trust him. And uh, Rock says, oh, you want to carry The Rock's bags? And Road Dog says, no, man, I just want to tell you that I, I hate your guts. And he goes to attack him. <laughs> but The Rock cuts him off. He starts whooping Road Dog's ass. And then all of a sudden, fucking like a bat out of hell, Billy Gunn comes off screen and hits The Rock with a jumping splash. <laughs> and, and Xbox and Triple H come start fucking him up. Uh, and then they load The Rock up into the trunk of... The Rock's car, and then Road Dog says, "I'll take care of this one," and then he leaves. He, he leaves steals the Rock with the Rock. Yeah, he steals him <laughs> in the Rock's car. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, Billy Guns. By the way, big line here as they loaded the Rock into the trunk. He he bends over and he looks at the trunk and he says, "You smell DX now." <laughs> what? Yeah, best of luck in that few, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> the Rock was cutting a mean promo on him in the trunk, I bet. Oh, you smell DX now. My name's Billy. <laughs> <laughs> he opens the trunk back up. Oh, look, Billy Gunn would be in the trunk. Billy, huh? <laughs> so backstage segment right after this, we come back from commercial. 
Kevin Kelly interviews DX about their assault and kidnapping of The Rock. Yeah, what is on your guys' minds? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? We just fucking killed The Rock. <laughs> yeah, he's he's out of here, man. He's uh, you know we're clear of uh, mine. DX has taken over. You think The Rock doesn't smell what we're cooking? They're still going with the fucking DX cooking here. Uh, and then Billy Gunn says that's nothing compared to what I'm fixing to do to Austin. And then Xbox, of course, has to chime in and says, "Alert it, Kelly, because we're taking it over." <laughs> Chill. All right. God damn. Don't, don't I hear fuck you. Out. <laughs> so British Bulldog versus D'Lo Brown is up next European Championship match. British Bulldog in the jeans, leading the Mean Street Posse. This is the best era of British Bulldog. Yeah. Yeah. Untouchable. Sadly, British Bulldog has pissed himself. As he came out here well, tonight. He was just excited, okay? Sometimes you get too fired up, you know. It's, and you yeah. know what's even crazier, Johnny, is that not only did British Bulldog pee himself, the match gets started, they go to the outside, and the British Bulldog has also pissed out of his ass tonight. <laughs> Listen. So, don't worry about Sometimes a dog's gotta do what a dog's gotta do. All so right? sadly, what the dog doing is the missing. dog is <laughs> peeing out the front and the back of his sure, ass and he balls. He just was in dressing room J and he got a shower. And he just got a little wet. There all right? is so much triangular pee. It's unbelievable. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. Dude, he's. He's the fucking man. Entirety please. Entirety of the underwear has been peed in. Front Dude, back. leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And uh, British Bulldog is also he didn't piss out of his ass. <laughs> Not well, what I don't know. Look at the tape. You tell me. I let the fans decide. <laughs> piss and pants up down. <laughs> Bulldog is also the most tan a human has been. <laughs> Until Vince McMahon later on. He, he is a shade of Oscar Meyer that has not been discovered yet. <laughs> Over on WCW television, you got Hulk Hogan, and then here on WAF, you have the British Bulldog. Who is more tan? We'll let the fans decide. Who pisses their pants more? <laughs> well, the answer is the Bulldog, no, no, because he has beat himself in the front and the back in a triangular shape, which is unbelievable. This can be explained, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, it's very easily explained. The man no, beat and then no. he beat the back way. No, no, I won't accept this. Well, it's a good night for the Bulldog. I mean, uh, one could only guess he beat himself because he knew he was winning the European title here tonight. <laughs> and the Mean Street Posse throws the belt. This is the craziest end segment to a match I've ever seen in my life. This how long is this match? Because it feels like it's a 17-minute segment. It's like segment. five minutes, I think. I think it's like a oh. five-minute match. <laughs> oh. All because right, so, there's so many instances of the posse getting involved, and I, in my brain, I think I took a commercial break. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny kind of looking at it, right? Because D-Lo, D-Lo can definitely... D-Lo will give you a match. He'll sure. give anybody a match. I He's good. Yeah. D-Lo's one of those guys that early on was... He was a guy that was way before his time. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we saw it earlier with Edge and Christian and Too Cool, too cool doing the death sentence, you know, alley oop nice. into the top rope. Yeah, the young boys the, are fucking bringing it out. To the fucking floor, right. And then we get the, the European title match at British Bulldog said, how about I chin lock you and I'll pee a little bit more. And <laughs> no, he, yeah, did. he no. did. He did. The dog's no, gonna no. pee. And we'll get the Mean Street Posse involved. It's Yo, just... I gotta pee. <laughs> what the dog do? Dude, I mean, yeah, like, Bulldog's, Bulldog's not taking any of that shit. I mean, he, I'm pretty sure he suplexes his D-Lo on the floor. He does, so we got he got one does, of those, yeah. at least. Yeah, yeah, they do go to the outside, get a little And they action. use the steps, like, immediately, which I was like, is this hardcore? What are the rules? How does this work? Do but, yeah, yeah, you know, he's bizarre. Whatever. It's British rules, Tony. <laughs> which, uh, well, also, the British rules say <laughs> no, that no, if no, anyone's no, British no. in this match, they must pee themselves in the front and the back before <laughs> no, the match God starts. damn it. No, God damn it. <laughs> and <laughs> he did. To your, to your point, James, I think you're right. I think this is definitely a bulldog match. And oh, I thought you were going to say should... I was right about the people. Okay, yeah, you're that right. Is it is a bulldog wrong. match. Yeah, yeah. all right. And well. like, he definitely, you know, get the posse involved as much as possible in any instance that you can, and we will do as little as possible in between that. Well, he this is what he thought being a top hill was. Yeah, well, uh, you know, he was just about to get that push, you know, him <laughs> they, and, uh, they saw this one <laughs> match, <laughs> they saw Bulldog at one single match and said, ain't no fucking way, bro. Dilo's the gatekeeper? <laughs> <laughs> ain't no fucking way. Uh, yeah, so Mean Street Posse throws the belt to the Bulldog. 
D'Lo catches it. Right. But then the bulldog clotheslines D'Lo anyways. <laughs> yeah, he clotheslines D'Lo. D'Lo fumbles the belt, and then bulldog picks it up and hits D'Lo with it for a kick out. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> D'Lo loads up the bulldog, Liger right. bomb out of the corner. Very cool. And then he goes up for the for the, the low down. Yeah. yeah, that's right. He goes up for the low down. <laughs> go up to go down. Yeah. Who what, was it? Pete Gas. It was Pete yeah, Gas that crotches him. Pete Gas <laughs> crotches him in the most polite way I've ever seen. I've never seen someone crotch someone as polite as this. He walks up behind him up the stairs. And then gives him two little nudges on his feet right behind him. I, what it was, James, I think he might have been afraid of his balance on the stairs because he walks down them very gently. He does as well. walk very slow. Back Maybe he was just trying stairs. to stay hidden. He just fucking yeah, went up the, comes up, parts the legs, and then walks back down. Yeah, just fucking don't, gives please don't him. forget the other members of the posse, Rodney and Joey Abs. Thank you. Yeah, they, they ain't pee themselves, so that's cool. Well, neither. Fuck you, man. Well, well Bulldog the then Bulldog. superplexes <laughs> D'Lo Brown, and he beats him with a superplex. That's a goddamn European title finish if I've ever seen one. Goddamn, he did it. the running power slam in the match and just kick out. D'Lo kicks out too. So Run, that was running, calling it running is being very okay. Fair, Tony. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the move name is running power slam. He did not do a running power slam. He did a sure. power slam. But. That's true. You're right. <laughs> it is the running power slam. I like. Finisher, I like but. to imagine somewhere Shawn Michaels just got like a crazy Spidey <laughs> sense that it's time to come back. I gotta come back. It's I need a commissioner. You guys need a commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Bulldog is the new European champion. <laughs> yeah, they the posse raise him up on his shoulders and he celebrates with the title and he's flexing up there and didn't piss his pants or his Dude, ass. There's, all right, man. I'll let the fans decide on that one. You guys let me know what you think. I'll make a poll. How about that? <laughs> no, no, no. The facts are the facts, damn it. And that's just a fact of life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell me. If you want LA Knight to pee his pants on TV, just give me a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a yeah. Like, where are you going with that? <laughs> Give me a yeah. <laughs> Give me one yeah. <laughs> if you want triangular P on SmackDown, <laughs> give me one yeah. <laughs> so we go backstage. X Pac is talking to Kane backstage in an alley. I've seen X Pac and Kane like together a million times, and this is still a crazy visual with X Pac in oversized DX jersey and Kane with very wet, tucked behind his ears <laughs> hair. <laughs> I like this promo. X Pac tells Kane, "Hey man, don't worry about the DX thing. We're just doing something on the side. It's, I'm, I'm still doing something. I'm still pros with you, Kane. I'm so good." Yeah. He says DX is my side thing. All right. That was yeah. He said, "I'm sorry about the other night. I told you I was going to interfere, but listen, it was either me or the chick." And, you know, someone I get involved in. We got to worry about the Dudleys tonight, and it's freaking payback time. <laughs> freaking. <laughs> freaking payback time. Come on, man. I like this angle. I like the angle that I and uh, I mean, we'll obviously talk about what happens, but I, I like the idea of a heel in a, you know, he's in a heel stable, but he still has this fucking friend that everyone loves and they love the tag team and they want to see it happen. So it's, uh, you know, uh, where do we go? I like it. Yeah, where do we go? I guess we'll see you later tonight. Or maybe not, bro. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to get Green hell. Cane. No Green Cane. Fuck it. Give Dude, us Green Cane at least once. Green Cane is uh, Fuck, come on. legendary. Well, we got the WWF Boot of the Week brought to you by yes. Lugs. Lugs. Yeah, Boots and Shoes. With Attitude. Oh. Not yet. But they will get Attitude. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's true. So the Rock, Rock Bottoms Billy... Oh, Billy. But then Xbox spinning heel kicks the rock at least what four the? times, it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> he kept feeding up for it for some reason. He kept giving it right back to him, too. Oh, my God, it's DX. <laughs> DX is back together. DX, damn it. <laughs> he does say damn it at the end. <laughs> damn it. So, I got to deal with this shit again. I fucking hate this shit. <laughs> you suck it. <laughs> that is so crazy, man. <laughs> So Road Dog is in the parking lot talking to security. That's Father Time. <laughs> hey, yo, Father Time. You see Steve Austin? He has to describe Stone Cold to this guy. You know, bald, probably uh, drinking a beer. And guy says, "No, I haven't seen him." What'd he you said, do "Yeah, I've seen him with Hulk Hogan." <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Huh? That would have been so sick. Wow. Yeah, it would have been sweet. Uh, he has not seen him, of course. 
No, of course not. But he uh, he does ask, what'd you do with the rock? And uh, Road Dog says, don't you worry about the rock. He's on the other side of the tracks, right where he belongs. What the fuck? He killed him? Yeah, did he kill yeah. the rock? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that, like, because uh, he kidnapped him, but in, uh, in my mind, you know, Road Dog's not going to fucking be able to pull the rock out of the trunk and then whoop his ass. Rock's going to fuck him up. So unless he drove the car directly into the ocean, I don't know. <laughs> he drove well, he the car he on the other side of the train tracks and just left Oh, he's it. just locked in the trunk <laughs> forever. Right. Yeah. But he left the keys oh, there. Okay. Oh, I see. I guess. So, <laughs> uh, we have Kane and X-Pac versus the Dudley Boys. Those damn Dudleys, man. And uh, they're on commentary, they're talking about, you know, how do you think Kane is the, the new recruit DX is talking about? Green Kane? <laughs> Dude, if Green Kane... Became a there's a fucking world where this goes the yeah. other way and X Pac wasn't lying earlier and yeah. he just told he the truth. DX, DX is yeah. my side thing and Kane, I want you to be a part of it now. It needs to be my main thing and I need and I want, you, my brother, to be a and part. I need you to be green. <laughs> <laughs> and Kane says, "I want to be green." <laughs> <laughs> and X Pac says, "Fuck it, fuck yeah!" And yeah. everyone on the board says, "Fuck yeah!" Dude, that would have been like a, a true boys moment if Green Kane had ever walked down to the they ring. They couldn't do one fucking week where he was Green Kane. <laughs> Even a pay per view, pay per view Green Not Kane. One Green fucking yeah, come Kane. On. Come on, yeah. Kane. He didn't even have to crotch chop. But if he did, <laughs> dude, fuck the hands up and then down into an X like oh, the cane pile. Yeah. That would be fucking sick. Wow, oh, green cane. You're Come right, on. Tony. One fucking week. He couldn't just turn <laughs> he on couldn't him. Couldn't give us one fucking green <laughs> cane. <laughs> it took you four fucking years <laughs> to ruin Kane. <laughs> Speaking of Kane, did you see uh, before Kane's power went off? The uh, ring announcer and the ref were holding their ears. I don't know if you saw that. When no, they had, like, I didn't. A wide see that. shot. They were plugging their ears for the pyro, which I thought That's was probably loud as. I it's bet back then the it was unhinged. Yeah, yeah then he, it was shoot explosions out of the turn. <laughs> yeah, there was like less safety precautions and shit back then. They were probably just like letting that shit ride, just fire fucking coming up everywhere. <laughs> just again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back up. They <laughs> 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 probably told you on fucking. Uh, they, everybody, when the cane comes out, you might want to hold your ears. You got any children in here? You might want to hold your ears. Damn, that's crazy. You're right. Yeah, I remember I was, uh, it was a backlash or something I went to uh, one time, and uh, Kane's fucking, I was right beside the ramp, and like, man. Dude, oh was my gnarly, god. Man. I was like, I've wow. sat, like, yeah, I've sat lower level when that shit goes off, and it's, it, like, fucking blows your face off. Shit would have been different if it was green. <laughs> <laughs> and green flames too. What about green flames? I like too? to imagine Aww. at some level, someone fucking who was back there doing it. Was it fucking brother love? Someone back there had to have said, "What if his ass was green?" <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> did you just say? Vince <laughs> definitely caught my green. Freddie game. Prince Jr. probably suggested <laughs> that. Son said, of a bitch. He ruined ECW. <laughs> he ruined Green Kane. <laughs> fuck you, Freddie. He almost gave us though. I can't say fuck you, Freddie, because he pitched the green cane. Vince said, "Hell no." Why well, hear that he's making a ton of money selling resin figures on eBay? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you bought any unpainted, of those? Like, unpainted, unpainted <laughs> Scooby Doo ones? That's crazy. No, it's, yeah. no, it's unpainted green cane. You get to choose the color that you paint them. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so he's wow. probably all right. Yeah, and that's. I'm sense. getting more and more sad that green cane isn't real as we talk about. Yeah, it. Yeah, well, because it's it's when you look back on it. One week? We're gonna have a one <laughs> week on the match. 40 one fucking match. shows that you had. You couldn't have not a even green. Like, not even like a house show so you could get like those pictures that got leaked online. Yeah, like Come the on. cape? Yeah. yeah. Just, just one Oh, you're right. What if it was a house game? show or something off TV yeah. where he's with just DX? Fun. And then like, yeah. Just just one then you turn on him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you turn on because you look stupid green, you yeah. idiot. Why'd you Why turn you green? green? <laughs> Big you green idiot. Green. You could just wear a jersey like the rest of us. What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh shit, Kane in the jersey? Oh, Dude, we jersey Kane? Oh my god. Holy shit. <laughs> jersey now Kane cooking. doing the arms up crotch chop. I like to imagine he, he wears Billy Gunn shirt. Kane with the all this and a really great ass too on his back. That would be crazy. Of course, he wore the DX beret as well. <laughs> the, the glow sticks, Kane. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Dude, that would have been awesome. You don't need that thing anymore. It takes off the red and has green. 
Oh, shit. Dude, that's what he does to reveal Green King. You don't need that thing anymore. <laughs> he rips all the red off his body. He his clothes off. He already has green. <laughs> he has green underneath. He was naked? green. Know. You know, he has green underneath the whole time, Tony. That's his real. Oh, that, yeah. Red is just his. On the inside. Yeah, it's his bullshit colors. His green is his oh, real. He bleeds like, green. Dude, he's like, he has I'm nothing. Missed- he's. He's wearing missed nothing. opportunity. Just a DX jersey. That's it. No DX pants. jersey cane. Like Winnie the Pooh. Dude, like <laughs> girlfriend, you know, like girlfriend shirt. Just no, no pants. Just DX jersey. Uh, so last <laughs> Monday, <laughs> last Monday, Dudley Boys attacked Kane and X Pac. Yes, during a backstage interview, they just jumped them, and then Bubba stole Kane's voice box. Well, you yeah, are. Well, Bubba's been making fun of Kane's voice lately. The stuttering guy. Yeah. <laughs> <So they get laughs> fun of Kane's voice. Okay, got it. Uh, so we get the match started here. Kane, Kane lines Devon, and on commentary, yes, they say he looks like a big red airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> Fuck you beyond belief. <laughs> what I was upset about, James, is top right, bottom left tag corners. Oh yeah, you're right. They probably didn't even the know. They, yeah. The fuck they yeah, here. you are uh, fired. The Dudleys are at least in the purple and blue deadlock shirts. Yeah, they look they look like the Dudleys. This is the most Dudleys they look probably that they yeah. change. Big red airplane. He could have been a big green airplane. Yeah, well, guess what, brother? We'll get a little bit of that later. <laughs> Kane <laughs> is kicking both these dudes' asses. Bubba, yeah, Devon, Kane is fucking about big time. Kane does a baseball slide to Bubba who's inside the ring. <laughs> 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 the fuck? <laughs> One of my favorite moves here. Kane goes to the outside, jumps off Holy. the stairs, Holy. and hits Bubba with a Kane line off the stairs. I like Jeff Hardy too. <laughs> I look like a big red airplane. <laughs> um. So the Dudley boys get the upper hand on Kane on the outside, double teaming him as the ref holds back X Pac. Yeah, the way that they get up on Kane on the outside is Devon runs behind Kane and slaps his ass, and Kane's injured leg now is fucked up. <laughs> Which makes sense to me, you know, that makes sense to me. <laughs> Big red ass. This wouldn't be a problem if he's green, but he's red. So. That's fucking yeah, true. He has right. different, you know, it's all different, his weaknesses Hit points, and all yeah. that. Lawler says that JR is a big Steve Austin mark, so he probably <laughs> knows where he's at. Ah, that's one of my sources. I can't, he's just calling you marks on competition. This is so crazy to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, his finish earlier, Road Dog, and now Marks, yeah. X Pac then gets in the ring and low blows Kane and hits no! him with the X Factor. No, no, you son of a bitch. Oh, he's not even green. You didn't even give him one fucking week. Come on, let him get in the group at least. God damn. Dally Boys pin Kane and they win. Well, Kane's up. He is fucking <laughs> right back up, dude. <laughs> he's up immediately. He throws the Dudleys out of the ring and it's just him and X Pac left and. Xbox, touch, you know, he's he's begging off, he's trying to reason with him, and double goozle from Kane to Xbox. I don't know what he was planning on doing, but he was going to throw his little ass out of the ring. But here comes Billy Gunn again, like a bat out of hell, chop blocks Kane, and here comes DX to fuck him up. This is horrible. He's not even in the. Come on, man, you one guys have one week. chance. This is it. This Go is like on, the man. only chance this fucking happens, and this is what this you is, do. This is horrible. DX puts the boots to Kane, all of them. They just start putting the boots to fucking Kane on the ground. (laughs) It's it's so sad watching Kane's limbs wiggle around. He's getting stomped out, man. He's one of some friends. Xbox says, your brother was right. You're weak. (laughs) He's like, there won't be a new member at DX tonight because you're a piece of crap. (laughs) I feel like that's where it was supposed to end, James. And he didn't know, like, he didn't think I was a strong enough closer. This is because you're a piece of crap. And I'm sick of carrying you. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the end of music. Where's the fucking music? God damn it. Oh, man. Yeah. We missed out on not only Green Cane, but Big Green Airplane. Oh, God. Whatever Dude, Jerry Lawler likes to say about Kane. The- he says a lot that doesn't make the peacock cut, I bet. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. So Nokia presents the 1999 Nokia. Survivor Series. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow, that's awesome. And the Hardy Boys versus Viscera and Mark Henry is up next. This uh, So the Hardy Boys are with Terry, uh, Runnels, of, of course, because they won the uh, titty tournament. <laughs> That's what they won. Classic. Yes. Uh, she is and very Jer- hot. She's unbelievable here. Uh, Jerry Lawler says his sources say that Kane left crying. He's gone. He's left the building. He's very upset and he's crying. His sources are he's- X-Pac. <laughs> <laughs> so viscera and mark henry come out here well viscera comes out first do people know these and guys teamed 
I don't. Yeah, I don't it wasn't know. long, yeah. so maybe not. Maybe yeah, not. This yeah. was because I think Mark Henry turns on D'Lo because of Viscera as well. Oh no, maybe it was because Mark Henry was being fucking, you know, persuaded by the Godfather and the hose, so they were probably together. And then Mark Henry left him because Godfather ga- lost the hose to the Viscera. That's what happened. So Viscera and Mark Henry are a team, but they don't yes. come alone. They come with the skankiest hose. Ever. <laughs> These are the two skankiest fucking hose I've ever seen. <laughs> He's screaming it at his monitor. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 wow, this is a crazy team, man. On Raw, Viscera had a match with the Godfather and has decided to get into the pimping business. I hear you. And Cole says, we have found out that Viscera is not the fun-loving pimp that the Godfather is. He is not nice to the hoes. <laughs> no, he's abusive pimp he is, of course. Godfather, tremendous to the hoes that he makes sleep with Steve Blackman. Does it, hold on, Godfather does not make the hoes sleep with anybody, all right? Is that not what happens? The hoes have offered their services... I and see. that is their job, right? That okay, is their job to the God. Sure. Now, well, that's, Vizra, that's on the other hand, <laughs> might be really making know. him sleep with people. Yeah, okay, sure. Uh, yeah, maybe. yeah, sure. Uh, one of the hosts has a super hard time getting in the ring, and Jerry Lawler unrelentingly just never stops the whole time going after this girl. The strangest looking dude ever just having a <laughs> with fucking... With the hair? Yeah, with the stinky little <laughs> schoolboy haircut. haircut. Fucking freak just going to town uh, on the hose the whole match. Well... The match starts here. Hardy Boys hit the poetry in motion. Um, it's They're always it's always so like weird seeing the Hardy Boys early on because these guys are so fucking young here, man. They're like unbelievably young. They're yeah. super young and they're still figuring it out. But all the stuff that they're doing is stuff that gets over and they're still doing like to this day. They try to double suplex Viscera. I thought he was going to double suplex him back. Well, if he would have did that, James, that should have been his finish. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. I bet, bro. I agree. Fuck you, man. <laughs> Tony, Tony, thank you so much, Tony. I agree. A Twitter poll would agree as well. Yeah, yeah, well, well his right Twitter now. poll would. But <laughs> thankfully, Viscera DDTs them instead because a double DDT is way better than a vertical suplex. Fuck you. Ah. Jeff then hits the Swanton Bomb. That's a senton bomb, thank you very much. It's crazy. It's not the swanton it is. yet, isn't it? No, yeah. I, I don't know who... Uh, you think it was JR that calls it swanton? Where does it become swanton? Yeah, it's probably JR. Swanton. He looks like a swan up there. Look at him go. Ton. Big red airplane. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a swan. Ton. <laughs> a ton of swans. <laughs> so Jeff hits the senton bomb on Mark Henry, and he wins as Viscera is distracted by the hose. That's true, yes. Uh, Terry also tried to distract Mark Henry with uh, her Oops. titties, which Mark Henry uh, does the titty-grabbing taunt towards <laughs> that leads to him getting sent on bombed. I don't even know how Mark Henry was in this match, man. He was sweating like crazy earlier. He was fucking <laughs> gnarly. You're telling me he came out here and had the fucking stamina? Go- like, this is, I mean, there's a reason I guess they call him sexual, sexual chocolate. chocolate. Yeah, man, the world's strongest man. He's fucking for They days. don't even fucking call him Mark Henry anymore. They don't even know if they no. said Mark Henry wants this fucking match. They said there's they don't sexual need to. chocolate. <laughs> yeah. That's real. That, once you know, like once they call you just sexual chocolate, you know your dick game is crazy. Like you, you, you're up there. You know what I mean? There's not many people yeah, on this legend. roster. Hall of Fame run in, in dressing room J. Yeah, somehow Val Venus is uh, upper on the card than than sexual chocolate. It doesn't make any sense. Weak dick game always has been that, historically. Thankfully, that doesn't last. <laughs> yeah, and it never will. It'll never sniff that spot ever again. So thankfully, that's a good thing. Somehow he shows up on our fucking Patreon on Watch This. <laughs> That's horrible. Wait, when did, when is, oh my Val, God, he does! Val, Val Venus is in the 08 fucking Holy roster match. Yeah, somehow still employed by 2008. 2008 employed Val Venus, man. That is fucking nuts. There's a lot of things WWE has done wrong in history, and that is definitely up there as <laughs> one of the worst. Employed. <laughs> so Viscera tells the hose to get out of the ring. <laughs> and then Viscera gets in Mark Henry's face. No. And he clotheslines them. That is, I mean, that's definitely what he does, but it felt like he just clubbed them with his fucking arm, and Mark Henry <laughs> took the craziest, crazy-legged bump ever. He's like, whoa, very ski whoa style. And then for the first time in my life, I have seen a running splash <laughs> the long way. <laughs> Dude, he, he, I, I don't think, like, he, I don't know if he was thinking when he did it because he does another one after the regular way. I have never seen a running splash the long way until right now. 
Have I? Have you guys ever seen this? I don't. The only time I've seen it is when I would do it in WrestleMania 2000 with Viscera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Viscera probably. The long it. way. Oh <laughs> man, unfucking believable. Well, the Dummy yeah, Boys, I, you're fucking up next. I have to see I, the 3D the long way. Y'all are tripping. We know it's possible. Dude, it's got to be possible. Viscera brought the question to the table and then answered it in the same segment. I mean, what? Can you do it the long way? And Viscera says yes. The answer is fucking. You goddamn right. And, uh, yeah, so he hits it the long way, the fucking splash, hits another one on him, and Michael Cole says, oh, he's, he's busted up the insides of Mark Henry. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Is that what he's doing? That's I'll never fuck crazy. again. <laughs> he's busted up his insides. What a cool gimmick for fucking Mark Henry. Your gimmick is you fuck crazy and you fuck, you fuck a lot. good, too. And you can't stop fucking. Girls want to be with you because they want to fuck you. Yeah, that sounds yeah, awesome. Yeah, he's got like a rep for this. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's fucking. What's that What's that one meme where it's like uh, Riz and sexual harassment? That's Valvius and Mark Henry. <laughs> Mark Henry is Riz, Valvius is sexual harassment. <laughs> <laughs> so the security guard from earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Security guard from earlier informs Degeneration X. <laughs> I don't know why he's stooging. I don't know what happened here where he he's left. He's DX. He just, he's a new member. <laughs> he left his <laughs> Green Father time. <laughs> he left his post to go inform DX that Steve Austin has arrived to the venue. Yeah, he walks into the DX locker room and Triple H says, who the hell do you? <laughs> that's Father Time. Says, oh, that's Grand Grandpappy. <laughs> yeah, he snitches at Stone Cold's there. God damn, bro! You, we're, uh, Stone Cold's gonna fucking shoot you with a rifle in a minute. Yeah, he, he actually does that off screen too. <laughs> <laughs> we don't see that one. That was the first one. <laughs> so DX comes up with a game plan to attack Steve Austin. Yeah, if, you know if Austin's smart, you know he's he's gonna know what it, we're up to already. We have to hit him before he hits us. So let's go get him. So they file out of the locker room, and that's. That's the last we see of DX for a minute. Well, I'm excited because now it's time for oh Big my. Boss Man with Prince Albert versus Al Snow <laughs> non-title match. No, yes, that's that's right. Non-title match. And they recap the history of the Big Boss Man, which James went over earlier, but we'll go over it one more time. You have to because it is fucking the craziest <laughs> shit ever. So Big Boss Man stole Al Snow's dog, Pepper. He ha had a muzzle, too, which was a crazy look for Pepper. He then... Kills and cooks Pepper the dog and invites Al Snow to a hotel room in which he feeds the dog to Al Snow. And then they have the kennel from hell match. I think that's after yeah, that. Yeah, but you had to also yeah. put in the part where Al Snow starts throwing up on the bed. On the bed. And then Big Boss Man grabs Al Snow's head and pushes <laughs> it into the throw up. <laughs> Beats him up to it. Oh, he stomps him out. Head down. <laughs> yeah, so he kills the dog, feeds it to him. Al Snow finds out, throws up, and he pushes his head into it. Correct. Uh, and then two weeks ago, Big Boss Man started to fuck with the Big Show when he found out that the Big Show's dad died, or so he thought, because he, he Boss Man paid off a friend to tell Big Show that his dad died, and it was caught on GTV, which was the hidden camera thing they used to have back then, which was never revealed to be anybody. It was going to be gold dust. It was supposed to be Green Cane, actually. <laughs> it was going to be Green Father Time. <laughs> All the OGs are going to be in this. <laughs> All the guys that Stone Cold kills. <laughs> and as we said earlier, Bossman stole the family heirloom watch that belonged to Big Show's dad, knocked out Big Show with a ball peen hammer. <laughs> in the head. <laughs> in the head. And then like Weatherface style. Like he bought yeah, him on top of the hammer. He him. Yeah, he practically kills him. And then breaks the heirloom on an big anvil. <laughs> Giant and comedic anvil. <laughs> Yes, like correct. a blacksmith, he fucking has an anvil and he's fucking ding, going to town on his watch. Yeah, he's yeah. making noises and shit, dude. This is <laughs> fucking crazy. Yes. Holy shit. Like, dude, what? Does, this is the craziest run of all time. Like, how do you ever it's come so back awesome. from it? <laughs> he fucking killed a dog and fed it to him. He fucking gaslit Big Show. The only thing that's close is Christian making fun of everyone's dead dad nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got to do something nefarious, though. Like, he's got to, like. Yeah. But I don't know if Fuck any, Jungle Boy's mom. Yeah, I don't think any. <laughs> Fuck Nick Wayne's mom. You gotta bring out a giant anvil to the room. And yeah. drop it on Nick Wayne. <laughs> oh my god. So Al Snow is here and yes. he doesn't have head. What the <laughs> he's, fuck? He's. <laughs> Al Snow is worried, of course, that Albert uh, is going to attack him. Bossman jumps him from behind, and then we're, we're just having a match. We're just having a regular match these between guys, the Bossman and fucking Al Snow. These guys stink. They do <laughs> nothing forever, dude. Why was this not just a fucking hardcore title match? 
Be- the heat from Albert doing all the bullshit would have been just the I same. Agree. Who cares? I agree. I agree. But they had to have something for later. Oh, of course. Well, Albert smacks the stairs with the nightstick and Correct. acts like he's going to throw it into the ring. So the ref looks over, but he doesn't. He pump fakes the fucking ref. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He distracts him. Big boss man then hits Al Snow with the title with the ref turned around and wins. This is. You could have just so- done that. Yes, dude. But I, I, and Al Snow could have said the same thing. Oh, just fucking fight me outside, pussies. Like he could have did the same exact fucking thing. So then after the match, Big Boss Man gives Prince Albert a headbutt for good luck. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the boys do it. Al Snow gets a mic and says, "Wow, what a surprise! The two of you beating me, dude." He cuts a million hour long promo. It felt like Al Snow says that being the grizzled vet that he is. He has to let the youth of the sport, he says, I'm sorry, he has let the youth of the sport yes. down, which is Prince Albert. Prince Albert's big, <laughs> hairy, hairy ass. <laughs> <laughs> he says that Leather Albert straps, <laughs> he looks fucking ridiculous. He says Albert wasn't physically involved enough in this match. Oh, okay. So the two of you can meet me in the parking lot oh, and shit. we can fight for the hardcore title. That's fighting words. All right, let's go. And he jumps yeah. into the crowd and leaves. Yeah, why don't you bring your girlfriend from cell block eight and I'll see you out there. All right. Is somebody else involved in this? What was that supposed to be now? <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't think he knew either. Somehow, everything goes completely fucking insane now. <laughs> yeah, so like, <laughs> sure. yeah, we already saw a big boss man, like, right. kill three people and a dog, a dog. and yeah. feed it. And yeah, like... But it gets even what crazier. More you, what more could you possibly do? Well, <laughs> so backstage, Road Dog is stuck in a bear trap. <laughs> and Dead by Daylight style. The <laughs> largest, <laughs> largest bear trap I've ever seen in my life. How is Road Dog's leg still intact with how big this bear it's trap like a, is? It looks like rusted and old too. Like he's got It's legit t- Trapper from Dead by Daylight's fucking trap brought to life. It's huge. And he's got add-ons, bro. Cuz this got, shit oh God, is yeah, large, bro. This is crazy, man. This is the most comically large bear trap I've ever seen and Road Dog is in back screaming in pain as Billy. his leg is never Billy. recovering from this. <laughs> Yeah, he's bleeding. <laughs> he's fucked. This is the craziest contraption I've ever... By the way, Steve Austin set all this up within about 20 minutes. Okay, he, okay. so Stone Cold set up this bear trap. It is gigantic. How in the world did Road Dog walk into this fucking bear trap? <laughs> he's how a dumb is this possible? <laughs> how, how do you not see this thing? He's just gallivanting in the back. Takes a quick <laughs> <Just> turn. Running? <laughs> Bam, done, game over. It's in fucking insane, man. It's crazy. Well, Stone Cold walks up and he says, Oh, it looks like it hurts, son. Can I can I help you? Oh, I got a little something for you. He pours beer on it <laughs> on his cut. He said, Take the, hey, take care of you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Leaves them for dead. So they come back from commercial. EMTs are now trying to pull the bear trap off of Road Dog's leg. All the while, Triple H is smacking the head of the EMT repeatedly. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna help. That's gonna help. Yeah, come on, hurry up. In comparison to everything else that happens to everyone else tonight, Road Dog got the shit into the stick on this one. He got bear trap big style. Yeah, his ankle is bleeding. I legit, I'm surprised they didn't try to like gimmick it where his fucking foot was off entirely. His fucking ass is done. I don't know how you yeah, even like. What do you do? You gotta amputate now, man. That was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, well, he, uh, they don't take him to the hospital for this bear trap injury. He has to stick around. <laughs> well, you know, I did, you know, I just said no less than 25 seconds ago that, uh, you know, Road Dog might have been fucked up the most on the Tonight <laughs> well, Show. I sure. lied because the next segment, <laughs> it gets even worse. So backstage, Big Boss Man and Prince Albert are now in the parking lot looking for Al Snow. It's a little cold. It is so fucking cold that they have to get into the car that was also just there, ready to go, that they had the keys for. An insane park job of this car, too, because it is pressed entirely up against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Which is awesome. It works out great. I mean, you really could ask for better conditions it, here for the big it, show. It does work out fucking fantastic for the big man. So it's a little cold. They get in the car to warm up. 
Al Snow has got to come to the parking lot eventually, right? Unless he sure. got lost. Uh, or the big show told him to fuck off. There's a plan. He has something that needs to be done here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> big show is here and he has a forklift. <laughs> Oh my god he is sitting in a forklift smackdown one backstage style here comes the pain style and it's he's in his full like he's not in gear or anything so he's just in jeans and a shirt and it is insane looking this is what happens like at every job in the back when it's time when it's like truck day and like yes they're like trying to find someone who's cdl certed and then like people are like well i mean I, you know he's not here and right? i could just do it this is ex- yeah. this is exactly what they're afraid of is going to happen when someone gets into the forklift. Well, 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 maybe James, maybe Big Show left and got his CDL and came back. He, I mean, he did pretty well with this shit. I mean, to be fair he, with you, know, I mean, yeah, my man was do. doing donuts in the parking lot after this and that shit. You know, he was doing well. So Big Show takes the forklift, pushes the forklift. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I thought was going to happen here. Uh, this was like on the ass end of things I think was going to happen. So I thought, right. I was like, oh, he's going to impale the car? Yeah, that's right. what I thought, yeah. And then I thought, oh, he's going to lift the car. That's what I thought that's he was going to flip I thought, the, yeah, I thought yeah. he was flipping the car over. No, Big Show pushes the forklift into the car doors so he can't get out. And then he starts smashing the windows and the windshield with his fists. <laughs> with his fucking bare hands and feet! <laughs> you wanna mess with me, huh? Just smashing windshield in with his fists. He jump. he gets on the hood of the car, starts jumping up and down like a gigantic baby. <laughs> he gets on the roof, smashes in the fucking sunroof. This with is his so foot. crazy. He's just jumping and his car is being destroyed. He does a big, you know the taunt Big Show does in WrestleMania 2000 where it's like a big double jump with his arms going out? That's what he does here on top of this oh. car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Big Show then gets up. It's it's right beside this little balcony almost, like this little overhang. So Big Show gets up on the overhang and he finds a dumpster. <laughs> and then as, as Prince Albert and the big boss men are stuck in a car that he has... Completely trapped them in. Annihilated as well. There's glass everywhere, surely. But that is the least of their worries right now. Now, Big Show pushes a dumpster <laughs> off the ledge <laughs> onto the top of the car, <laughs> crushing it to fucking pieces. He and, kills them. And he, he does the die. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> And this dumpster completely annihilates this car. Destroys the car. There's nothing left of it. They're fucking dead. They have to be. They have to be. There's no way they got out of that fucking car. Big Boss Man and Prince Albert are not fucking get out of this fucking car. They're dead. It is unbelievable how smashed this car was, man. It is fucking crazy. It is crazy. And Big Show's reaction to it is nuts. Him stomping on the top of the hood. I mean, this is... Uh, the, uh, everyone knows this for you know the the coffin thing being dragged away. The Big Show boss man feud has so much. How is other this shit not talking about more than yeah. the Big Boss Man? Tra- <laughs> uh, here's Big Show killing Big Boss Man and Albert <laughs> and Prince Albert, his friend. What the fuck? Yeah. What Holy the fuck? shit, man! I could not believe my fucking eyes. He did the top. I'm oh. trying to find out. How, I'm, oh, I'm trying to find out how they follow up on it, but I I don't. I don't they probably, come back they probably have a week, two-on-one yeah. handicap match next week, yeah? <laughs> so do you right? That's probably right. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. So we go from Road Dog being bear-trapped to Big Show killing Prince Albert and Big <laughs> Boss Man. <laughs> like, very thought out. Like, Big Show, this is not, like, off a cuff. He no. got his CDL, fucking pushed the forklift into the car, <laughs> pushed the dumpster off. And then taunt cheese. Smashed it to fucking Smithery's taunt cheese. <laughs> That's crazy. So Mankind is backstage walking, singing, got the whole world in his hands. Yeah, he is. And uh, I was not aware that we were in uh, book era Mankind. Yes, we. Uh, I don't know when <laughs> this starts, and it never stops. It never so. fucking stops for the next yeah. 20 fucking years. <laughs> it must be soon because they're like... Uh, uh, later on or in the next segment they talk about like being surprised that he's in the fucking top 10 New York bestseller so this book must have just came out yeah. so it just happened well Billy Gunn is hanging from the ceiling upside down by his feet <laughs> oh just before that by the way Mankind stops while walking down the hallway looks inside of a locker room and says hey, Blackman I'll let you know when I find your charisma buddy and he keeps walking <laughs> yeah go to your fucking book <laughs> dude leave just fucking fuck with Al Snow leave Steve Blackman alone he'll kill you 
So yeah, Billy Gunn is hanging from the ceiling upside down by his feet. <laughs> yeah, he's pissed too. He's fucking you son of a bitch. You fucking bitch. <laughs> Steve Austin walks up. Oh, how's it hanging, Billy? <laughs> Yeah, but Billy Gunn calls him a son of a bitch, and it bleeps it. And Austin says, "Brother, you better watch your mouth, son, or I'll beat your I'll beat you like a damn pinata. You ain't so tough now, you son of a bitch." And he flicks beer <laughs> at him, flicking beer at him, crazy. Stone Cold saying, "Brother is crazy, hey, brother." <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, dude. Yeah, that <laughs> first, like this is like a Tom and Jerry. Like this is Tom, Steve Austin is Tom and Jerry in these. Come dudes. to life, Cartoon yeah, Network. Yeah. 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 Well, the rescue of the week brought to you by the Coast Guard. <laughs> what, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Dude, God, I yes, every I week. lost my mind. Every the week. Coast Guard. Well, yeah, the rescue the of the fuck? week, Tony. What could the rescue of the week be brought to you by the Coast it, Guard? It's got to be a good thing, right? Because they want the people to think good of the U.S. Coast Guard. Val Venus has assaulted mankind last week with a chair. <laughs> <laughs> and that, the army. That is the army. the rescue of the week. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, Mankind was about to beat Triple H for the belt, and fucking Val Venus comes out and hits Mankind with a chair, leading to a DQ. You son of a bitch. Yeah, well, next week's Rescue of the Week is Big Show Killing Prince Albert and Big Boss Man. <laughs> Thank you to the U.S. Coast Guard. <laughs> the, US, the U.S. Coast Guard should fucking take Val Venus out in the ocean and leave him. <laughs> He'd still find his fucking way back, man. Yeah, you're right. So Mankind versus Val Venus is the main event. This is so fucked up to hear. These I cannot words that you're believe saying. this is the main event. And I can't fucking believe we got Val Venus in the main event on this show. I uh when I, when this match was going on, like when it ended, I was like, what the fuck else is on this show? Because I don't I don't they haven't announced anything else. I imagine maybe Rock will come back and have a match, or like Stone Cold's here, so maybe he'll like do something with one of the guys he doesn't kill yeah, from yeah. DX. Never did I think that I was watching the last match of the show when Val Venus came out. I could I could It was like a double hit. Act. It was actually like a triple hit here. Yeah, which it's stunk like shit. So first off, I'm brutal. confused because it's the rescue of the week. And nobody got rescued. <laughs> second off, we come in here, of course. Well, second, second off, we got fucking Val Venus in the main event. And yes. then Fucking third off, we have Val Venus cutting a promo. <laughs> Fucking fourth off, Val Venus tells me that mankind has a book. And I go, God, oh, fucking oh, damn it. Oh. This can't be true. Oh, my God. And then fifth, Val Venus says he's the single fastest up and coming athlete the in the WWF. Fastest up and coming athlete in the history of the World Wrestling Federation. He's lying. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that was what the, he thought was going on because him and Bulldog were the top heels at the time. Holy shit. So Val Venus says, mankind, you want respect for your ring? work don't you what's a, a fucking promo. respect you want to respect for your fucking book i said <laughs> <laughs> no ah uh, yes the mankind book peppercorn brain <laughs> what that's <laughs> a really good val venus don't, don't ever do that. it again yeah i was gonna say i don't want to know that <laughs> don't ever do that again yeah, in your entire life this Sorry. was if you can believe it my official deadlock plus two nine Holy shit, James. Let me give you some insight here. This is also my deadlock. Plus 10 of the Let me tell you something, guys. Oh, this triple. is a triple. Let's go. The first Plus time ever. Of the night. It never happened. The first time ever. <laughs> Book Mankind versus Shitty Val Venus. Yeah, wow. the boys are really here. This is real shit, Tony. <laughs> Fuck this match. Fuck this fucking match. So Mankind does Sako and pins Val Venus somehow. So the thing that I saw, Tony, is plus 10, plus 10, armbar, plus 10, plus 10, armbar, <laughs> plus 10, plus 10, heat, plus 10, uh, plus 10, double arm DDT. Guaranteed and then, they went outside and did a suplex on the floor. I feel like that's like guaranteed in his joint. Mankind uh, had to have taken the stairs, right? Mankind yeah. takes the stairs he into the chest, to. which was fucking crazy. Yeah. Took him <laughs> face first in the chest. That's the only thing I saw so from the match. Of course he does. Mankind goes for Sako reaches very far deep down into his sweatpants and he can't find Sako. All the way so down to his ankles. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, no. <Yeah. laughs> You're that big, man. <laughs> He's no trying way. to find Sako. He can't find it. Plus 10, plus 10, plus 10. Al Snow gives <laughs> Mankind Sako and Mankind wins with Sako. All right. So we, we done with that one. We're do that I mean, well, I, if if you have anything possibly left to say Dude, about that one, I don't. 
<laughs> so we go backstage. DX is back here. Road Dog is somehow fine. He's not in the hospital after being in a bear trap. Just a little bandage on it. A little blood yeah. still coming out, but a little bandage. He's Billy good. Gunn is somehow fine. <laughs> he is okay. Yeah, he's okay. They're both looking like they're mending the same injury. <laughs> Xbox then gets a call on his cell phone. Why can you hear so cold? I didn't even think of that, Tony. You're right. Yeah, Xbox answers his phone. Hello? <laughs> X-Pac. <laughs> hey, hey, hey X-Pac. Hey, hey. Hey, Austin, shut the hell up. Hey, you listen to the radio, don't you? Uh, you know, uh, Casey Kasem, right? I said, what? The fuck is happening? <laughs> he said, "Well, I got a message from him. Yeah, you know, yeah, keep your feet on the ground and, and keep reaching for the stars." Xbox said, "Reaching for the stars." And he said, "Yeah, you know, reaching for the stars." And he, Xbox looks up, and then the ceiling <laughs> collapses on Xbox's fucking head. <laughs> Just falls right down on him, and Xbox has to sell this. He falls down, f knocked out. He looks like he died. On the floor. Yeah, he, it's a GTA oh, ragdoll. Fuck. Xbox is lying on the floor with all this debris all over him. <laughs> yeah, he's got plaster juice. <laughs> Drywall <laughs> and plaster all over him. <laughs> all over his shit. And Road Dog takes the phone that it fell out of his hand. He says, hello, Stone Cold, you son of a bitch. You got no balls. <laughs> you got no balls if you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> no balls. <laughs> That's me on Xbox Live until somebody leaves the you party. No <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got no, come back here. You got no balls. <laughs> That's me after Leland knocks me down in fucking Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You got no balls. Back all four escape at the end of the game. Fuck you guys! You got no balls! They've all just connected. If you, can, if you can hear me. So now it's time for the DX Town Hall number two. This is the main event of the show. Is DX hobbling out <laughs> to the ring to address Stone Cold Steve Austin. They are all gimped. Road Dog's leg is fucked up. Billy Gunn's leg is fucked up. X Pac's got sealing debris all over him, <laughs> plaster in his hair, and Pla shit. Yeah, drywalled to hell. Triple H though is okay. Got the fucking music. <laughs> uh, Triple H thinks that Steve Austin could be under the ring. Who knows? Yeah, yeah you, you want to play games with us? I am the game. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, he he says uh, you could be anywhere. You could be under the ring for all we know. And then Lawler and Cole say, oh, he could be. So they legit start looking under the ring. Billy Gunn goes outside of the ring, lifts up the apron skirt to see the heat apron underneath the SmackDown one. <laughs> but he's not under there. There is no Stone Cold under the ring. I was hoping there was. I was hoping he just... Like, yeah, he just would be under the ring. <laughs> chainsawed Billy Gunn's legs off. <laughs> just during the middle of this, you just hear Steve Austin, Hey, X-Pac! <laughs> this is Austin! It's me, it's me God from above. <laughs> Reach for the stars. More ceiling falls on him. <laughs> just randomly. An anvil. <laughs> So, Triple H says they have 10 seconds. Steve Austin has 10 seconds to come out here, or they're going to go back there and get them. Yeah, suck them up into your guts one time and show some balls. <laughs> what? You got balls? <laughs> you got no balls if you hear me. Triple H counts to 10 and then says, Puss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shut the hell up. I'm counting. Where was I? Nine, 10, Puss. <laughs> <laughs> they go to exit the ring, and then the glass breaks. Oh, shit. Here comes Stone Cold in a gray Stone Cold Saloon t-shirt. This is super based. <laughs> this unbelievable look. Uh, so Austin was trying to trap a bear, but he ended up trapping. <laughs> he's, he's got a bunch of fucking... He, the, if The Rock was... Dude, I wish... That The Rock and Austin both double team promo DX here. Has that ever happened where Austin and Rock both <laughs> shit talk somebody in the same promo? Well, there's Probably. no coming back from that at that point, I imagine. That, no, maybe it was too much. Yeah, yeah. there's no coming back from that, so. Austin, hey, I, I've been in the back listening to you. Flap your gums and run your mouth all night long, but DX is back, and Stone Cold doesn't give a rat's ass about that. You say you're the game and you're, you're taking over WWF. Uh, uh, <laughs> and it's going to happen. Look at your four pieces of trash. <laughs> Get I, go <laughs> Get <up. laughs> I go backstage and I set a bear trap thinking I'm going to catch a bear, but I catch a jackass. 
Stone Cold thought he was going to catch a bear backstage in SmackDown. And he looks at Road Dog. He's like, don't, don't get hot, you little bastard. Anyway, badass Billy Gunn. Well, they might as well call you dumbass Billy Gunn because yeah. you fell for the old snare on the ground trick and you're hanging upside down back there. The old you silly, snare on the ground. <laughs> you silly yeah. bastard. They fell for that big style. <laughs> the old snare on the ground. Yeah, I always how, fall for that one. Hell, X Pac. The only thing I like about you is your name, because it sounds like Six Pack. No, it doesn't. Yeah, no, it, yeah doesn't. it does. So X Pack, Six Pack. <laughs> it's it's all about. It's oh, pop. you're so damn stupid. I gave you the old Casey Kasem line. You know the one. Keep your feet on the ground. Keep reaching for the stars. And old Seedlin falls down on your sorry little ass. <laughs> <laughs> he runs them all down. So it, it, Austin says, if you think DX sucks. <laughs> Give me a hell yeah. Give me a yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One yeah from the crowd. Yeah. Trust I want to see you try. Come on down. So Austin starts coming down and DX huddle together in the ring, getting ready to fight. Yeah. Austin said that at the bottom of the ramp, by the way. He was already done his promo. He got back on to do the one more time if you think DX sucks. So they, they actually, so their fighting stance for all four of these guys is they huddle up as close as they possibly can and then look at Steve Austin coming down Face the, the ramp. same direction. <laughs> What the fuck? And then all of a sudden, a net drops from the ceiling <laughs> and captures DX. <laughs> like, what? like a, they're fishes. They just captured sharks in the ring. And the net. Well, he falls thought down. he was gonna trap a fish, but he tried a bunch of jackasses. <laughs> just keep happening. Austin gets in the ring and jumps on top of them and starts fucking kicking all of their asses in the net. This is the fucking biggest net I've ever seen. By the way, it is like. Literally, like I was, I've seen, you know, you've seen the nets where they're in like the, sure. the jungle or whatever. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but this is like so thick. This is a thick fucking net, dude. It is. It's insane. Austin only has gigantic traps. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it. He has the biggest versions of whatever he's using. He gets it from the Acme store. <laughs> <laughs> he goes to the big section and finds them the big bear trap. Big net. Uh, Triple H is out of the net. He comes in and him and Austin are trading blows. They're fighting in the ring. And then wait a minute, that's Kane! Oh, oh shit, it's he's green? No, no he's, he's a piece Aww. of shit. <laughs> he comes down, he starts fucking DX up with Austin. Now, Kane and Austin are doing just fine on their own here. They did not need any more help, I don't think, because they were on top of them. If you smell! <laughs> oh my god! It's a rock! It's a rock to do all of his finishers! <laughs> the rock kills Billy with a line. I mean, just decimates him to shit. He's on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rock rock bottoms road dog. Rock bottoms <laughs> Billy Gunn. Fucking stunner on Triple H. Stunner on x Pack. Kane Dude. choke slam. Stunner to x Pac, and he feeds into the choke slam. He doesn't like sell down. He turns around into the choke slam. It was awesome. And on commentary, they're like, "We fuck, we can't get out of here." Yeah, the, the, it goes dark with Kane goozling Billy Gunn. <laughs> we don't even get to see him do it. Yeah, there's no proper outro. It's just like, oh, it's a he's show. Him. Yeah, well, that's all we got for this week. That's all, folks. Wow, what a uh, what a hot way to end the show there. Not. In, at all what I expected this show to be. I thought the Austin stuff was way more padded out. I And I didn't, like, the other shit that happens, like the Viscera stuff and the Boss Man stuff, I didn't expect at all. No way. It got crazy. At, like, one point, it just hit, they, like, dialed the yeah. needle up all the way, and shit was it, going crazy. Sweet, too cool, and uh, fucking uh, Edge and Christian tag match. I mean, this is a fun-ass show. Yeah, yeah, it was. I enjoyed this quite a lot. Dude, it's funny because uh, DX just came back and there's supposed to be like this dominant group and they just got their ass kicked by one guy. So well, gold. You, you can't forget who the top guys are. There's no way they're getting beat up by fucking, come on, Tony. fucking Billy Gunn. Come, yeah, come on. Dog. Yeah, he didn't get his ass. Come on, man. Everything, you know, <laughs> dude, he just happened to have a big ass bear trap and like, and, uh, <laughs> how could they see that coming? You're right. You're God, right. Like me is not seeing that coming. I'm walking around You're backstage right. and I go, what the fuck? My leg! <laughs> 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 That is that fucking, fucking unbelievable. Yeah, it's fucking unbelievable. It really is. And, uh, you know, bookending the show with DX, ending it with, sh with DX, well put together show. They really thought about this shit back then, so I, I always appreciate that. What they really should think more of are the lyrics to the intro to the SmackDown theme from this era, and that's really what we all ask for here. And think more about whether you should change the color of Kane. Which, Green. you know, it's I, I bet you it's 50-50. I think so. I'm going to have to put a poll up. <laughs> All right, well, then it's not 50-50, and it never will be. <laughs> well, that is it for this review of SmackDown from October 20th, 1999. And